Uh, it's a little bit on the quiet side, actually. How about you guys? Okay. Yeah, it's a little quiet. A little quiet here, too. Sorry if I sound a little raspy. I'm uh, getting a cold right now. No problem. Yeah, you sound fine. All right, guys. So, last week when you guys left off, um, you guys were out taking care of the Scarecrow and meeting Maxine the Talking Horse and all that good stuff. And uh, Sancho and Woody both said that they saw a guy come in who said he's uh, opening a local or a pub just uh, the street from where you guys are at. And uh, he was trying to, you know, pretend to be friendly, like doing a neighborly kind of visit, but they both got the impression that he wasn't really all that nice. So. And I used to heal away any. <laughs> okay, so then uh, you guys uh, were getting ready to, after your long day, you guys took a rest, and but you guys did notice that there was a, well, ghost found him first, that there was a couple of rats running around. So. And then we heard that noise outside too. So uh, did you apply, uh, go ahead and, yeah, uh, apply the long rest for us, G? Assuming that we're starting oh, in the morning, right? Yeah, unless you guys, uh, was there anything else you guys needed to do before you actually finished resting? Or went went to sleep. Nothing for me. I was just gonna I was gonna pick up a few more bolts, uh, but we could do that in the morning. No problem. Do you remember how to apply the long rest G? Just found it. There we go. Okay. Should be going now. Yep. Okay, I'll I'll back in there a little bit, but okay. There uh, we go. Akasha still got a hunter's mark on that you can take off of the combat tracker. Okay, but that's it. Actually, she can do it herself too, Becky. Do you remember how to do that, Becky? Yeah, I just don't have it up. Hang on. Doesn't hurt anything like it is anyways. Presumably she'd probably put it back up again as soon as we get in a fight anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Sako, you said you wanted to go pick up some more uh, ammunition? For bolts yeah, instead. just uh, ten more crossbow bolts if possible. Okay. From Telly. I know yeah. we sold some, so. So I'm currently at 17 right now. Um, that'll bring me up to 27, and I'll just take these three ticks off the ammo thing. Okay. And is that under item sheet where it says how much it costs for the bolts? You just type in yeah. arrows or bolts? Bolts. Well, it's specifically using bolts. a crossbow, so you would. Yeah, crossbow bolt. bolts. Okay. There we go. Oh, I gotta reload the books again, damn it. I'm, I'm not gonna do I it right now. If I if I end up needing it, then I'll do it. But I'm not gonna do it yet because I keep. And those are. Uh, Sorry. G. Okay. Oh, if you need to do them real quick, it's it's fine, Holmes. If it's you know something that you need to do. It won't affect you guys. So I'll download the PHP, but I don't think I'll need anything else at the moment. But before we level again, I'll need it, but that's fine for now. Okay. Uh, and those are five copper pieces each, Sako. Sounds good. Uh, just a ten then is fine. Bring me up to twenty-seven. Cool. So if you've got silver in yours, it would just be five silver, Sako. Otherwise, you can make change. Uh, look at that. Can you carry more than twenty bolts at a time, Holmes? Yeah. Well, generally, a case is only supposed to carry twenty. Uh, uh, you know, a bolt case. But I don't. You know, who cares? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's up to you yeah, how you want to handle it. But I mean, you could you could just buy a bigger case that would carry thirty, and nobody would ever notice the difference. You know. So, yeah, so for me, it's kind of a hand thing. Of so, yeah. All right, yeah. I'm going to deduct off my copper pieces here, my CP. Uh, what was the total again? It's 50 uh, CP five or 5 silver. silver. Five, yeah, 5 silver, 50 copper, whatever you want. And I was going to ask you, Holmes, I was looking, uh, The there's a charm of restoration that Akasha was supposed to get, well, she is going to get for uh, joining the Emerald Enclave, but I did not see it when I searched under items. It said that it's in the DM's guide, so I could, I'm sure I could look it up, so could we... If it's not in the items, can we add it or something? Like, after we're done today? Yeah. So I didn't see it when I typed in charm or restoration. So, okay. under items. Um, I'll put it in my... Because I, I keep a little log of notes in it. In fact, actually, we had a couple... Of, no, we did those. Uh, Map Patrol School. Yeah, we did all the ones I had from, from two weeks ago. So, I have a little section just to go over, like, for things if you have questions during a... You know, how to DM stuff or something like that. Um, so, I'll just put it on that, and then we'll do it afterwards. Charm of, charm of restoration? Yep, charm of restoration. All right. All right, I'll help you find it. Cool, thank you. I don't have the books loaded, as otherwise I, I could just do it now, but we'll do it afterwards. All right, so, um, 
guess the morning's pretty uneventful. You guys go Taco Bell shopping a little bit. Um, not really too much going on. You guys see the usuals, of course. Jerry and little Jerry are back pretty much not long after. You guys open. He pretty much spends all of his time there. So um, while then, we're uh, outside, so for for you know, Sako may have gone over to the to the bent nail on his own, but uh, or uh, uh, Eldor may have. But um, I guess probably when we go outside together, where it's you know afterwards or not, uh, I want to look around outside for where the source of that noise came from, and uh, let Eldor and Akasha know that I heard you know a noise of some rustling outside, like more similar potential rodentia kind of sounds coming from outside so that you know this could have been a, a source from you know if that uh that competitor was dropping them off or something because they had already gone upstairs so they hadn't heard about it just want to make sure okay. they know um you go uh to the wall that you knew that you heard something at last night and uh you go look around and if you can please give me an investigation check sure and you're outside right you said yeah yeah i'm going outside yeah. to look where, where the wall was out there basically Awesome. Not good. Yeah, not too good, but still, that one actually is probably not too hard to notice, even with a not too good of a roll. Uh, but you do notice, um, you only see one uh, as of now, but you notice that there's a little tiny hole that was bore uh, in the wall, you know, not, not too high up, uh, and it looks like it was teeth marks that did it. And, okay. Uh, you're, and then you, you know, put two and two together and assume, okay, well, that's how the damn rats must have gone in because you guys fixed the place up there's no before that you know you guys fixed all the holes and shit so okay so it had not been there. To get in. no that is you did, did not see that before okay, excuse me so how what's the diameter look like are we talking you know a regular rat size yeah what well, would fit you know a regular rat so no, nothing too big Eldor Akasha do you guys have anything to patch this up beyond you know just just you know some wood and some uh, you know, and nails. To pack I was up. thinking we could stop by the uh, um, the carpenter guy and see if they had any type of copper or steel sheets, and we can just kind of install them in into the ground right around the uh, against the wall, the outside, just to kind of put a metal barrier. Be well, if we patch this one spot, unless uh, you know what actually, now that I think about it, what's on the other side of this wall? Like, do you guys know what you know where this hole goes? Where we're standing, I suppose. Like, does this? Uh, this is a DM question as well. But uh, G, would you give me the map real quick? Yeah, actually, I'm gonna pull that up right now. So, the floor map for the, the new one, anyway. And I'm gonna take Ghost around the entire building and see if there's any more holes. That's okay. a good idea. Yeah. Uh, then give me. If only we had uh, a stupid uh, white cat around here. <laughs> <laughs> a dumbass token. Was that it? Yeah. Uh, incoming. Yeah, floor one. So. All right, cool. It actually loaded. <coughs> I was afraid it wasn't gonna load again. All right, All right uh, can you throw a like put a little arrow or something on the map for us for where that hole yeah. is? Like to the left of the door, I'm assuming. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you were yeah. you were trying to get a roll from Becky there too. Uh, oh. yeah. Can um, uh, is Ghost using a sniffer? Uh, yeah, trying to smell out where the rats are coming in, if there's okay. any more. Then with advantage in investigation, please. So it looks like there's a lot of stone wall all around us. Uh, is the rats burrowing in from the stone, or is it just like a wooden piece? It might be a you know wooden uh, walling around the foundation, like uh, you know over certain parts of it or something. Like first of all, just to to be fair, to the map is an artist's rendition of it, not necessarily what you know the the walls may not actually be stone, despite what the map shows. Um, if we pull our money together, we could just pick up some uh, copper or steel sheets, something cheap and expensive, and just kind of tack it on the outside of the wall so they can't chew for the first three feet of it. Three feet. We could. Uh, the, the, the question then, though, is we would need to do that the whole way around, like literally the entire way around the building, because, you know, just like water, if they're, you know, if the rats can't get through that one three-foot section, they'll just go two feet to the left of that and find another place. So we would literally have to do the whole thing. I'd rather, I mean, that's that's not a bad solution. We can definitely do that too, but if we can find the source of where these rats are coming from first, that might be the more permanent solution. Probably cheaper too. And we could feed Ghost. Um, did you guys see that little spot on the map? Yeah, that so they're, they're burrowing under room. the deck because there's a deck outside the door, so they're burrowing under the deck and then getting in somewhere. 
Um, yeah, okay, we'll just say that. But I was just, I wasn't sure if that was a deck. But either way, we'll just say, like you guys were saying, that they went through the deck and then found, like, little wooden spots up under, in between the stone or something like that, is what it was. But yeah, they're coming in from that wall, not far from the door. That's okay. where the whole house was. But so if when... we, then, it, so if we look through the hole there, you know, that would be that section there is a deck, and then there's a wooden door to the north. So, uh, okay. here, let me, let me draw, I'll show you what I mean here. Uh, I see that wooden is, door to the north, yeah, yeah. Like, that's a little walkway that's, or something. In that's there. the actual door to get in. Uh, yeah. These here are windows, and then this is another door. So the, the the two that are like that, that one and the one directly above it, those are windows. So there's basically one door that goes up to the north part, and then the main front door is there. And then there's another door here that goes into the larder and the kitchen, and then a door that goes out behind the bar. Those are all the doors. But the okay. blue ones are the windows, basically. Those are okay. the windows that I was looking out through to see if I could find, you know, if I saw anybody. Okay, yeah, so we'll just say maybe they just that that wall up there in between the doors. Maybe there's just the so it'd be you know just to the north of where I drew uh, in between the two doors up there. They'll okay. just say that that's the hole that you found. But then when Ghost and Akasha were going around, there's multiple other ones too, all floor level. Oh, gotcha. uh, and then also since Ghost uh, used a sniffer and got a pretty good roll there. Um, oh yeah, that's a good enough roll. Uh, you notice that the holes um, look like they they were definitely gnawed, but it doesn't. It looked like it was gnawed by a bigger tooth, so like it wasn't as many small scrapes. It was a few bigger scrapes, I guess you could say. Like there isn't as much damage to the wood to get through there. So, you know, it, it seems like whatever gnawed through is not is uh, you know bigger at least than your than your average uh, rat. So. Definitely an animal. <laughs> yeah, so something used its you know teeth or claws or something to get through it. So scraping through, it's just again, it's not as fucked up. So it doesn't look like there's as many little bites. It looks like there was more bigger kind of teeth scrape bites to get through. So. Okay, did you guys want to go uh, get that metal sheeting and start doing some repairs, or at least get the stuff and you know? find out about getting people to help you with it or we should definitely patch the holes for sure that the steel plating around the outside of it especially because you know the doors are still there anyways basically rats are gonna find a way in anyways it's we might be better suited to find where they're coming from and our first as uh, akasha had suggested you know uh, well i guess this would have been in the morning because she'd already gone upstairs uh, for the previous night but you know it is that it's likely that our new competitor might be uh, involving himself in this way. What do you guys think? Eliminate variables. Yeah. All right. So on to the store. Grab the supplies. Okay. To patch up the holes. Yeah. I don't know if I want to buy a bunch of, of metal plates yet. That's going to be a lot more expensive and, and more time consuming to get the work done. Yeah, I'd probably go check out uh, Amic. I think was his name, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. The new guy. We could just metal up the uh, the wooden area there, that small little section. Yeah, I mean, if, if you said there were multiple holes, ballpark how many G that uh, Ghost found? Yeah, there's, the there's a, a few other and a few others that go in the northern wall too. Uh, so like in between the windows and stuff, lower, you know, where the, there's wood under the stone and everything. So, um, probably you know six, eight different holes okay well yeah we, we pretty much it's, it's not one spot that they're even getting in through so that one particular one doesn't matter so much uh do you have any kind of like uh like mold earth or mend or anything like that eldor or akasha either one of you nope i don't think so i'm checking okay it's and, definitely uh, a druidy kind of a thing i'm not sure if uh if clerics generally have that kind of stuff If not, I'm sure you guys could, you know, ask a Sancho to ask around, and I'm sure there's plenty of guys from the Carpenter's Guild and stuff that come through the bar. Maybe they'll Nothing. just want to make a quick buck, you know? Nothing. They could okay. do it for you. Yeah, I think then we'll when we go by the uh, by the vent nail, maybe we'll we'll find some, uh, you know, the, the kind of laborers that are standing out front <laughs> and hire them to come <laughs> patch up the holes in the walls a bit. Um, so that we can just take care of, you know, other business, like maybe go visit our new competitor and see, you know, if he just happens to have like a big Acme truck full of rats sitting in his parking lot or something. 
Yeah, the acne truck. Oh, rats. Yeah. So, Look for a nefarious rats. man with a long rat tail mustache. Uh, out of curiosity, did we? Did you guys get any impression? Does he? Does he know what we look like? I, I mean, he stopped by. From what Sancho said, I didn't really get the impression that he knows what we look like. He just wanted to introduce himself as a, you know, as a. Uh, he was, of course, trying not to give the impression necessarily of being a, a strong uh, competitor, but clearly he is. Uh, at least he's intending to be. But if he doesn't know what we look like, then we could potentially go in, you know, without him knowing who we are and maybe look around a little bit in his new place first to see if we see signs of rats, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sancho said. Uh, Sancho said that he has heard of you guys, like your adventures and stuff like that, but obviously it doesn't mean that he's ever seen you or anything. So Well, a furball definitely a stands out. So, so like, if he knows. knows that one of us is a furball and ghost, absolutely, yeah. So, do, yeah, we don't have any so means of disguising that. ourselves, do we? I don't, but I can always leave ghost outside, like, out back to sniff around four rats. I think I might have something to disguise myself. Do you? We, we should probably look for something like that, especially it seems like that would be useful in Waterdeep anyways. As a, a I have a Disguise Self spell. Okay. Then we could probably blend it, especially if he's... Is he open for business yet? I know he said he was going to be soon. We'd beat him to it, but like, are we going to stand out just as three people walking in anyway, or like, are there people there? Did he say? Yeah, no, there's there's people there, because he's about to open uh, uh, probably you know either today or tomorrow, so uh, he's probably got people coming in, checking it out, and doing finishing touches and stuff so it's not and he's there well you'd assume he's there you know because it's the day the day before he's going to open or the day that he opens and so Cassandra didn't catch it exactly but it's going to be very soon so because you guys he, he wanted to try to get the place that you guys had but you guys got it first so then that's why I delayed him a little bit but he is just about ready to open so it wouldn't be abnormal no for people to be going in and out so what do you guys say? well or at least they... walking by to check it out at least you know new, new shop they're curious Okay. So. Then, Eldor Akasha, what do you guys think? I mean, we could probably blend in the best during the grand opening. There will be the most number of people there, and we can probably, you know, sneak into the kitchen, sneak into the back rooms, things like that, look for for potential signs of this, you know, intentional sabotage. I'm down. My disguise self lasts for one hour, so we have one hour. Okay. Then if we if we can get an idea of when, he's, when the grand opening is going to be, that's when it will be busiest. Maybe we kind of just blend in with the crowd then. I mean, Akasha and I can blend in with, you know, just the general riffraff of, of Waterdeep, and if Eldor can, you know, if you can kind of hide yourself to look like just a random person, too. A furball would stand out too much, you know, going to be head above the crowd, and he'll know that there's a furball with us. So if you can kind of hide yourself to look more normal, <laughs> you know, no, no offense, but you know, some more no normal, uh, then we could probably, you know, maybe sneak in and check in back rooms and things like that to see if maybe he's got, uh, if, if we can get any indication that he might have done this on purpose. We think. Yeah, it's a good idea. All right, then in that case, um, I guess you know we can or Akasha, you probably be the sneakiest at it. Maybe you know head over there and and you know as, as a group, but even or you by yourself probably be the sneakiest, um, and maybe see if you can talk to you know a worker. Obviously, avoid him specifically. We got a general description of what he looks like from. Uh, uh, from Sancho, but if you can find just a general worker and find out when the grand opening is going to be, and then we can go back then. What do you think? Sounds good. All right. So, um, are you guys still outside when you're talking about this, or did you guys go back inside? Probably outside where the holes were, just with you know being quiet, obviously being aware of surroundings and not letting people overhear us. Okay. Then, uh, uh when you guys, little Jerry, or Jerry and little Jerry actually come outside, and they're looking, he just wanted to see you guys, he's like, hey, did you guys hear that that, uh, that new tavern's gonna be opening today? I'm gonna go check him out this evening, he said he's doing the, the finishing touches, so I just wanted to, you know, drink some here for a little while first, but I'm gonna go check them out later, hope you, uh, don't get mad or jealous, so. You traitorous cunt. <laughs> He, he puts his hands like, it, it was little Jerry, I swear, and little Jerry just begocks at you, he's like, he starts pecking at your own shit. Uh, did you happen to hear ballpark at what time? Like, are we talking sunset that he's going to be opening? Yeah, he said it's probably going to be, uh, you know, for the evening crowd. He just trying to get the finishing touches done. So he wanted to try to be done earlier, but he's got, uh, he, he's, he's always, I looked inside and he's got a bunch of like real fancy stuff there. So I think he's more concerned about, uh, having the grandest opening possible. So probably more like evening time. Hmm. 
uh, I'll just smile at Akasha then that, uh, you know, saves us some effort there, but, uh, how far away is, is Jerry? If I say something quietly to Akasha, no, worry, he's not going to overhear. No, yeah, he, he's not that close. He was just coming, he just wanted to come say hi to you guys, because he's like your biggest fan, so him and little Jerry, actually, when you said that, he's like, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, fine, I'll go sort of sit back down, you know, after you accused him of being a traitor, <laughs> so he's not actually scared, you know, he's just... He's going to go sit back down. He's like, all right, I just wanted to uh, talk to you guys and see if you were going to go check out the new tavern later. So. Yeah, no, I was I was only kidding bruise, anyway. Bruise, bruise. Um, that does potentially throw a wrench in there. Um, okay, so once he's stepped back inside then um, to Akasha and Eldor, then I'll say, well, I don't exactly trust, you know, the, the old drunk uh, and his bird to keep things quiet for two things. One, that... He, I, I wouldn't trust him to look around for us. You know, don't bother. I don't think we should even bother mentioning to him that, uh, you know, we suspect anything because, uh, you know, his, his uh, he's got loose lips enough that he told us where, you know, he had seen Floon in a matter of, uh, you know, one beer. So that's all it took for me to get information out of him from previously. So if Emic were to try something similar, I bet he would, you know, spill his butt guts pretty quickly. Therefore, not worth trusting. Uh, secondly, on that, though, the concern that I have then is if he's in the middle of that crowd and drinking and then spots Akash or I, I wouldn't trust him to not say hi, and that could potentially spoil our cover as well. So now, we may be down to Eldor's disguise alone to search the place. How do you guys feel about that? That's fine. Me and Ghost can walk around outside out back and see if we can't see if he can't smell any rats back there, so... You know, that could do. I could, I could maybe, I go in and talk to the guy and just try to keep him distracted. You go around kind of sniff, that's because, because Ghost's nose would be super helpful, of course, to try to sniff out a rat infestation, uh, especially if it was, you know, an intentional one, like if you find him in a, in a big box or something like that, rather than just being, you know, regular rats that are infesting his place. But... I, I, maybe I distract the guy, you go sniffing around, Eldor goes very uh, stealthily as possible, basically, to try to break into the back rooms and stuff. What do you think? That sounds good. I can try it. Sound like a plan? Sounds good. So, you guys going to uh, go back in and stay inside for a little while until it gets a little bit later, or are you guys going to do that now? Are you going to wait until the actual grand opening before you guys go in? I think grand opening probably be best. It seems like we, that would be the easiest to blend in because there will be a lot of people there. Less suspicious than being really walking yeah. around. Again, it won't be overly suspicious because again, there's spectators walking around and you know people, workers and stuff still going in and out. But I mean, yeah. But easier to sure distract him too, and and you know having yeah. a, a lion walking around the outside of the building is going to be a little bit questionable too. So you know, the, the more people that are there, the less people there, are, the less noticed that would be. Before uh, I go sneaking around, um, can you show me how to take off that armor and all that stuff just so it doesn't take away from my decks? Because I'm, I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage for that for stuff. Yeah, as long as you're not going to get in a fight, you know, then, then you'd be okay as far as, uh, it's called doffing. Donning is when you put armor on and doffing is when you take it off. Um, your, what, what kind of gear were you wearing? Did you put on like scale or something? Scale, yeah, it gives a... Uh, I think it gives a negative thing to my dexterity overall, yeah, and I, I need it, that for stealth. Yeah, it caps you at two, I think, or something. So, uh, yeah. go to your go to your inventory tab. Uh, I guess first, are we like I'll just head in and, and you know hang out at the bar, uh, you know, with with Sancho slash Woody, depending on how many people are in, um, until until time. Unless you guys have anything you want to do during the day. Uh, no, I might go up to Jerry and have a conversation, see if he knows anything about this guy, like if he's local. Or new. Okay. Then, while you were doing that, let me look this up real quick, and then uh, we'll see if Jerry knows anything or wants to talk. Anyone's like... Get some corn for little Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Try to bribe him, just like I bribed the big Jerry. Exactly. All right, babe. So you're gonna go over and talk to Jerry and little Jerry so um, what are you gonna say to the two of them uh, just ask him if he knows if MX you know been around a while or if he's new in town he says uh, I'll be happy to tell you but is my next uh, my next ale gonna be on the house of course and, and what about little Jerry's next ale is his gonna be on the house too 
I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, because, you know, he'll drink it for him if Little Jerry's not, you know, in the mood to finish it, so. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> he says that uh, he has um, actually uh, seen Emic around town, that he actually, him and some of his family, had moved here in uh, 1451 DR. So, sorry, that's echoing really loud through the headphones. That's right. right. And uh, when they, him, when him and his family first got here, uh, they actually had a business meant tanning leather. So they worked as tanners when he first got here. He knows that. But uh, he knows that um, also that when his parents died that his sisters took over the business running it and he didn't like the way that it was ran so then he decided that he didn't want to do that anymore so he stopped uh he stopped doing that and got into other business ventures so but he was a leather worker a tanner when he first came here with his family so okay does he seem like a decent person or is he into some shady shit yeah i kind of get an odd jerry says he kind of gets an odd vibe from him uh he you know doesn't really know like he's never seen him do anything bad he's never seen him like you know stab anybody over a, a card game or anything like that kind of thing but he just seems a bit shady and also he kind of seems like he's uh, not very good at managing his money and he's he's has uh, he knows for sure that uh, some of the guilds are mad at him because he actually did some repairs the carpenters guild was mad because he did some repairs to his building by himself instead of hiring the guilds and in, in Waterdeep basically the guilds uh want to do everything and they very much frown upon you and will sometimes cause trouble if uh, for your business and everything if you don't use them to do the labor or whatever it is for that type of work so there uh, at least the carpenter's guild isn't a big fan of emic because he had done some repairs to his building on his own instead of paying them to do it okay well, so nothing as far as you know he's not like a straight killer or anything like that just kind of a kind of a not good with his money and kind of seems like a dick so Okay, well, thank you, and enjoy your beer. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Always happy to stay at my favorite tavern, ever. Well, for now. <laughs> he says that quite. He's like, did I say that that loud? I'm sorry, I didn't say that that loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. So, uh, also... While you were waiting, you see there's a guy drinking at the bar, uh, the human male with dark skin and uh, long dreadlock hair, and uh, he sees you guys over there, and, he's, and he, says, he waves at you guys, and he stands up off the bar, and he says, hi, how you guys doing? Uh, I, I take it you guys are the owners of this place, right? I'm actually at the bar, you know, anyway, so I would be near him. Um, I don't know what table okay, he's Jerry is with first. Akasha. Um, okay. I'll just I'll just nod at him. Okay, so yeah, he's looking at you, Rob. Because if you're sitting there, then he's uh, he's like, "Hi, uh, uh, you look kind of familiar. Are, are you uh, one of the owners of this fine establishment?" And then you just nod at again, him. Nod, and then, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, and he says, "Oh, that's nice. I like this place. Uh, I'm actually a business owner around here too. I'm I'm the guy that's going to be running the new fantasy Costco. We're going to be open here real soon. So I just wanted to come in and meet you." He's like. My name's Delbert. Nice to meet you. And sticks his hand up. I'll shake it. Nice to meet you, Delbert. Uh, we were actually looking forward to this place opening. He's like, yeah, gonna be soon. Just getting the last of my items in. And I'll have some, uh, uh, not your standard run-of-the-mill stuff, so not exactly easy to get stock in. But uh, I'll be open very soon. So once you guys come in and, and see me, and you know, maybe you like some of the stuff that I have at my shop. I know I like what you guys have here. Here's your drinks. Sorry, got a work thing there. Uh, good. Well, we're, we're looking forward to the place opening anyways. I mean, how long do you think before you'll be opening the doors? Yeah, he says it should be um, tomorrow or the next day. Just about finished. Just finishing touches. So I know I heard there's a new new tavern opening up there too, too so I guess we're going to have a local, or a very similar grand openings. So. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, we'll actually be there at the grand opening tonight, so hope to see you there. He's like, cool. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, my friends call me Dell the Funky Homo Sapien. So, you guys come <laughs> on by. Dell the his Funky name. Homo Sapien? Yeah, but his friends call him Dell the Funky Homo Sapien. Okay. So. 
Uh, you said he was dark skinned with dreadlocks. We're talking like Rastafarian. Yeah. yeah so he'd be African American. He'd be black if he was a standard human. So, okay. which I'm sure. I just don't know. What yeah, it is. I'm like sure a there's a, whatever it is. That's a Cholt know, definitely. That kind of human. Yeah, Cholt definitely is is uh, jungular, and I think the uh, jugular. I don't think it's a word, but uh, it's a jungle. <laughs> um, and and I think they. Uh, um, were African, but I'm not 100 percent sure. It might just be South American. So, but anyways, it doesn't okay. matter. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter off the top of my head. I was just curious for, for what the what nationality it would be. Yeah. All right, guys. So just pass in time until grand opening. For me, yeah. Yeah, I don't have anything else. Okay. Uh, Sako, anything else? No, that's about it. All right, well, later on in the evening, it's just a standard day, stuff coming in and out. Uh, and then when it comes to buying the stuff for the repairs, obviously, we'll just say that that was part of the daily cash coming in and out. So, And then if you guys want to, uh, we can just say that you talked to some of the people that you know were from the Carpenters Guild and said, hey, do you guys want to make a buck? And they patched it up for you if you want to just hand wave it like that. So, But so the holes are fixed. And then if you guys still want to reinforce it later, you can. But um, the holes are fixed for now, the rat holes. Uh, did Sancho Sancho pay that out, or, or do we need to? Uh, Sancho just did it out of the petty cash. They didn't okay. ask. They didn't ask for much money because they liked the place, and you know you guys are always really friendly to them and shit like that. So you let them have a tab every once in a while, if, as long as they pay up and everything. So they're cool. So Sounds just good say to it was me. just money in and out kind of thing. Give them a couple free beers with siesta. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they probably did most most of the payment and free ale anyway. So they, they can nap under the deck. <laughs> nice. All right. So, um, you're going to use your disguise self before you go, Sako? Because you. Yeah, right you know, before we go, it only lasts for one hour. Okay. Because you notice that uh, it's you know probably about you know about five o'clock or so, and you see that there's a lot of people kind of walking down the street. Well, just right up the street. They're at, he's not even that far from you. Um, I can actually let you know which one it is here in just a second as you're strolling up there, but uh, you see a bunch of people heading up that way, so you're assuming it's probably just about time to open. So, if you want to head that way. So yeah, let's go. Which maybe is. maybe we duck into okay. an alleyway, you know, before we get close, basically, before we get an eye shot of the, of the new bar. We duck into an alleyway so that uh, Eldor can change himself up. That way you get as much time out of it as possible, rather than doing it, you know, and then being disguised for the entire walk. What do you think, Eldor? Yep. Yeah, as we get closer, just kind of duck away, and I'll cast uh, Disguise Self on myself. And uh, what I'll do is I'll make myself appear one foot shorter than I am, and skinny, and obviously more humanoid, kind of a mixture of people that I've seen. I'm just trying to make yourself kind of like inconspicuous, nothing too much standing out, get rid of your fur and all that good stuff. Yep, just a standard uh, skinny guy, one foot shorter than I normally am. All right, and um, is that a um, a spell or a cantrip? Uh, it's a uh, full bo full bog magic. Um, it's just under the standard magic thing. I could do it once per day, and I need a long rest to do it again. Okay, cool. Then uh, just remember that you use that to mark it off or whatever. You should and have a little so... little circle next to it. Yeah, got it. Okay. So you are disguised, and you are going to. Uh, for now, are you just? Uh, Blending kind of in with the crowd and just walking around and pretending like you're looking around and stuff. Yeah, I'm just going to walk through the bar, just kind of looking around, looking for just lay of the land pretty much, just looking where the doors are, seeing what uh, areas I can. I could... Okay, uh, and so that would be probably what G uh, for, or deception instead of a stealth, or what do you think? Um, I mean, if he's being that. observed, uh, the, the, well, okay. It's more so, perception than anything yeah, else. Yeah, if, if you're talking about the doors that he's looking for, or what he's looking around for, it would be perception initially, and then if he's looking at something specific, like if he's checking a specific door for, you know, evidence of rats or a you know, specific box or something like that, that would be investigation. Uh, the deception that you're thinking of is if, if he's being stared at and somebody's trying to decipher whether he's, you know, disguised, which, I mean, at this point, nobody would necessarily okay. have a reason to think that, but if that would be a deception role. Yep, that was my uh, that was my question. But again, that's what this guy's self is for, and he's not doing anything odd yet, so nobody's staring right at him. So uh, go ahead and give me a perception check, please. Checking around everything. Okay. 
All right. When you look around, you notice that uh, he does have uh, the main front door that you that everybody is going in, uh, and you do notice that uh, there is a back door as well. And you see that everything around here is like uh, very um, fancy looking. So it looks like he spent a lot of money like on the uh, uh, the decor and everything like that. It's very kind of grandiose. You notice so places filled with a lot of people and he's just walking around kind of shaking hands and stuff like that and uh, he seems just happy and you know friendly trying to meet new people and everything okay uh can i just make my way to that back door uh and just gently press on the uh the door handle to see if it's unlocked uh yeah you i'm not actually going to open it i'm not actually going to do anything i'm just going to press down to see if it turns okay so just very gently so for that one um yeah, you notice that the knob does seem like it moves, so it doesn't seem like it's locked, no. Uh, now, okay. there is locks. You do see locks on the door, but they are not locked, so. And, and the handle did move, so as of right now, at least it's unlocked. Well, okay. just real quick, while, while Eldor is kind of testing doors and looking around, I want to head in and specific, look specifically for Amex so that I can uh, talk to him but have his back to where Eldor is. Because he's the one that would know where all these doors are and would be paying the most attention to them potentially if somebody's trying to walk through them. So I'm going to keep like talking to him and distracting him and just you know keeping him turned whatever direction is needed to keep his back to Eldor so that he's not seeing Eldor try to go through these doors. Okay. So go ahead. I just wanted to I wanted to say that I guess specifically that that I'm trying to keep Emic from watching Eldor. <clears throat> no problem. So you go up and uh, do you introduce yourself or yeah. just walk yeah, up just, and... just flat out and I'll, I'll keep it all on the up and up like we don't need it's up to you if you want to go through that part of it I don't, I don't want to I'm not I don't want to steal a spotlight I just want to make sure that uh, you know we're trying to give Eldor the best possible odds of you know making his way through without uh, getting spotted oh yeah no problem I was just going to say because if uh, Emic knows that you are the local you know businessman over there then he's going to you know talk to you differently than he would a regular person because he's you know going to have different stuff to say so you do yes say that and your name's with Robin, the idea yeah, with the reason being that if it was just a random patron, he would probably, you know, break quickly to move on to the next random patron to talk to because he's inviting uh -huh. people in and so on. But if he knows who I am, he's more likely to, to be at least feign interest long enough to give Eldor time to investigate. Okay. Yeah, so when you go up and introduce yourself, he's like, oh, okay, so because at first, I mean, he's still very friendly and stuff like that, but he kind of seems almost distracted. Uh, and then when you say your name and that you're from Ghostfire, it's like, oh, great, I wanted to meet you guys, come into your place yesterday. Uh, as you can tell, uh, I'm opening up this new place here. I mean, you might know my name. My name is Emic, and uh, I just wanted to come by and meet you guys since we're going to be rivals, apparently. Well, we don't, we don't have to be rivals, but, you know, both have the same kind of business in the local area, so... Yeah, there's plenty of people in Waterdeep. I'm not worried about it. Uh, you know, we, we were just out on business, so it's nice to meet you as well. Um, you know, the place looks great. Uh, seems like you're you're doing a good job here. Uh, I'm again just just kind of turning around him so that he's forced to look at me uh, and away from where Eldor is. So if you want to, you know, up to you if you want to hop back over to Eldor, you know, testing doors and stuff like that. Up to you, however you want to handle it. Okay. He actually, um, while he's talking to you, he does. There's one thing you do notice that uh, catches your ear. Because he tells you that uh, he actually did try to buy Troll Skull Manor first, but uh, when he was buying it, that somebody outbid him. That damn Volo Thamp son of a bitch outbid him, so he was trying to buy the place that you guys have, and uh, was outbid, and then that's why he had to buy this other location, which is not nearly as big and nice, so it's not a bad place, but... Yeah, yeah I mean, this place it, is definitely nicer. So. We we kind of lucked out, you know. Troll school was was gifted to us. Essentially, we did Volo a favor, uh, and he couldn't quite afford the the price of that favor, so he gave us Troll school instead. So, it wasn't exactly an intentional thing, but uh, you know, end result, we got a nice place out of it. And I mean, yours looks nice as well. There doesn't seem to be, uh, you know, any any rat problem here that I can tell. That's good news. He says rats. Oh yeah, we definitely uh, we definitely don't have rats. That's not good for business. Um. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be good. Uh, can I offer you a drink? And you asked if you if you want a drink. So. I'm, I'm uh, narratively because I was sitting at the bar earlier. Anyways, I'm probably pretty well off already, so I probably wouldn't be drinking anymore. Uh, this is more a fact finding mission, so uh, not that I would tell him that. I would just you know politely decline. He says, "Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, I'm glad you had a chance to try our place. 
and uh, since you do, since you were already drinking, uh, I wasn't even paying attention to that. Uh, you do notice that his uh, liquor, whatever it was that you were drinking, does taste like it's a bit watered down. So his does. Yeah, the the whatever you were drinking, the ale, the, the liquor, whatever it is, uh, tastes like it okay. was you know what a I, bit watered down. So what I meant was, as I was drinking at our bar earlier, when I was sitting at the bar waiting until. Um, until you know time for the grand opening uh but that's fine though like i you know a, a beer would have been fine i just meant i wasn't gonna drink anything harder um okay but looking over my shoulder though like how is eldor doing as far as checking doors and stuff like that uh, nobody has noticed yet um can you give me a stealth roll eldor just to make sure it stays that way That shouldn't have been disadvantage because you took the armor off. Did you take your armor off? Did you mean to? Um, yeah, let me double check here. I don't think it made a yeah, difference. But you don't have to change anything. But if you took the armor off, I don't. Well, Sorry. you can just out of simplicity's sake. I mean, so Sako, the the message that I sent you, uh, did you you saw those right? Yeah, it didn't make any changes to my uh, anything. But I'll I'll try and re-roll right now. Okay. Well, either way, I mean, you no, rolled a seventeen, so the seventeen plus two would be yeah. a nineteen. But we'll just go with that because we'll just say you didn't have disadvantage, and you can just—you don't have to take the armor off. We'll just say because, but narratively right now it's not on, just in case you know you do get fight or whatever. But uh, you would had a 17 plus two, so that was a good roll. So uh, no, nobody has noticed anything, um, and you are looking around, and everything seems super clean, and there's no, doesn't look like there's any, uh, no rat droppings, no holes in the wall, you know, no like chewed up stuff, anything like that that you noticed. All right, since no one's looking, I'm just going to slip in that door really quick, real quiet. Okay. Uh, that uh, back door? Yeah. Okay. And when you head out that back door, uh, were you um, out back, honey? Yeah, me and Gus would have tried to stay in as many back alleys, so we weren't noticed by anybody going into the bar. Okay. And when you slip out, Eldor, you notice that you are uh, outside on the other side of the building, and you do look and see uh, a little glimpse of a black cat and Akasha over there. So you have successfully snuck out the back door, which was unlocked as of now. So. Okay. And nowhere around there I saw rat droppings or mouse bites or anything like that? <clears throat> nope. Um, can you actually since you're both out there? Uh, Akasha and Eldor, can you please both give me another um, perception check? Uh, one for Ghost with advantage since he's sniffing out stuff. Uh, Ghost can do one, but it'd be regular because it would just be his eyes. Alright. Actually, yeah, just his eyes, yeah. So, he can do one, it just be wouldn't be with advantage, though. Okay. Yep, and uh, Eldor, you're definitely paying attention today, and you notice that there's uh, a, a couple of halflings, actually there's, there's four halflings, you noticed that were going through the back alley and they're walking around to the front and they look over at you guys and kind of give you an odd look not like you know they're going to kill you or whatever but kind of like a, a strange look and they look at you a couple times as they're walking around and then they look over a ghost and they definitely get this uh not really scared but a little bit of a nervous look on their face like okay. the cat is making them a little nervous more than the the giant well okay you don't look like a furball but like the the two of you they look like they don't you know like they're kind of standoffish definitely but they look a little weary of ghost so okay one thing that happens if we had been back there would we have noticed the halflings coming up to the back alley and I'd, I'd just say that they were walking by sorry i didn't plan that very well so but uh, you didn't notice them until Eldor had popped out. So they okay. were just coming through. And so they just happened to be coming through while you guys were all standing out there. And Eldor okay. noticed them. So. All right, well, since we're back outside, I might just sneak back in the room again and uh, take a look at more things inside. Okay, everything else inside, you just see people drinking. Uh, again, everything, like, everything is, uh, <clears throat> very expensive, you know, the decorations and all that stuff looks all expensive, and then, you know, Rob did notice that the drinks were watered down, so apparently he doesn't know exactly where to spend his money. Uh, nothing else seems too out of the ordinary, but, 
did I see uh, any other rooms or an upstairs or just something that may be locked or uh, off limits? Like a kitchen or anything like that? Back room, storeroom? Yeah, storerooms. Yeah. yeah, when you look through, there's uh, they're not actually like closing doors, but like doorway entrance things uh, to the kitchen area. Uh, and then beyond the kitchen area, when you're looking through, because you know, they're probably not going to allow you back there, but you look through and you do see that there is a locked door that you would assume is probably the, uh, the storeroom or the cellar or something like that back there. So, And then there's a, another little room that you notice too, kind of like uh, an instant wall, another room behind a little door that you would assume is the office. So, Otherwise, it's mostly just one room. It's one level. Is there any way I can just kind of, uh, kind of mosey on back to the kitchen area and uh, accidentally look for the bathroom back? And look where? Walk into the kitchen and just uh, play stupid like I'm looking for the bathroom. If anyone asks. Okay. So you're walking through there, and somebody's like, uh, uh, "Sorry, you're not supposed to be back here. Can I help you?" Apologies, just looking for the bathroom. This is a new establishment. Just kind of want to check the place out too. It looks wonderful, and uh, I kind of like what you guys are doing back here. Just want to see the kitchen and uh, give my compliments to the chef. Uh, sure. Okay. Well, we got a second. I can kind of show you around just real fast. You know, from you can see everything from here. But you know, over there is, is that's where we got the grill, where we make the food up and everything. You know, and then. Uh, this whole time I'm just kind of looking around for, for little things for rats or anything like that or just something that would help. Okay, you hear blah blah blah, that's where that is, and, and over there is the cellar and points at the door that's, you know, locked that you saw. That's the storeroom over there. Uh, and then as you're looking around, can you give me another perception piece? Yep, another good enough one. Uh, you do notice that it is very clean. Uh, there's no, again, there's no droppings. You don't see any like rat traps or anything trying to catch them. Uh, when you smell too, nothing seems out of the ordinary. It actually does seem on the up and up, very clean. And the the people around you seem just like regular people. I mean, none of them seem like, what the hell is this guy doing here? They're kind of curious as to why someone's in the kitchen, but now they see that that cook was talking to you and you know showing you around and stuff. So like, eh, whatever. So it seems very normal and very clean. I'll point over to the to the uh, stock room. Just hey, that that looks like a pretty nice stock room. Can I take a look at that with you? And maybe we can go back. To... Yeah, nothing really. To, nothing too fancy back there. We, you know, we just keep it uh, locked up so that way you know people don't come if nobody's paying attention and try to steal some of the booze or whatever. So there's run over. The and so the, the cook's like, hang on a second, and they go over and they walk off for a minute. And then she comes back, and then she comes back and she has a key, and she's like, yeah, I'll be happy to show you. So she opens it up and uh, opens up the storeroom for you and shows it to you. And Did I happen to see where she got the key from, just for a mental note? Uh, no, you saw her walk over, uh, well, it was the, you saw her walk, and there was a bunch of people that were kind of, looked like they were turning around looking at one person, so you would assume she probably went towards Emic. You didn't see exactly, but you assume she probably went over and found Emic, so... Nice. All right. And uh, yeah. I don't see anything out of the ordinary? Nope. Just uh, extra, you know, uh, kegs of beer and bottles of liquor, uh, you know, the dried foods and stuff, and like some of the produce and everything. They have extra ale and a couple extra chairs. I mean, um, uh, chairs and stools and stuff like that. So, again, nothing out of the ordinary, and you didn't, and um, you don't even need to roll for that one. That one's clean as well, too. You don't see any, you know, rat shit or anything like that. All right, well, I'll thank them for their time and uh, ask them where the restroom was since I was looking for the restroom anyway and uh, be on my way. She's like, oh, yeah, no problem. Happy to show you. It's uh, over there and around the corner. And she points that, you know, down the other way, down the hall. So. All right, I'll exit the kitchen. Uh, at this time, uh, I'm in the main hall, I guess, with uh, with uh, Rav and everybody. Uh, I guess I'll just kind of quietly move Towards Rav, if he's not near the uh, the bar owner, if that. Yeah, if seeing if seeing you heading this way, I'll I'll have kind of disembarked from uh, from Emic. I was yeah. trying to keep his attention this whole time, so he was probably at some point trying to to escape, anyways. Uh, then what I'll do is, uh, without speaking directly to Rav, just kind of keeping cover, I'll face the opposite direction or at a 90 degree angle and just kind of fill them in quietly of uh, what we found and in the kitchen and the 
So nothing, nothing stood out that was in the storeroom, like the kitchen, everything seemed fine? Looks clean, no rat poop. Uh, storeroom looks clean, there's no cages, there's no rats, there's no uh, funneling equipment. It's just uh, looks like a normal clean kitchen and storeroom for now. And then the back door is uh, it's just a back door. You said you saw a cellar door though, a locked cellar door? Or was that just, just the, you know, the, the room into the, the storeroom? Was it separate? Like, did you see a cellar or no? Uh, no, that was just a storeroom. I, okay. Yeah, storeroom slash cellar. Just one place. Yeah, just one room. And this place and doesn't appear to have any kind of it. upstairs either, right? Nothing like in the floor or anything like that? Yeah, no, it was just a single story and, you know, just a separate area for the kitchen, uh, the cellar behind that one door, and then there was an office area too. Well, you would assume it was an office area, just a small room behind a door by itself, you know. So. Did you get a chance to look at that, Eldor? I know I didn't get that one. I think with the amount of people around, do you think it's realistic for you to be able to, to try, or, or is that to look, to look too risky, you think? Uh, might be a little risky, but I think I can uh, handle it without we, this armor. Yeah, if you get if you get tossed out, you know, no big deal anyways. Like you're you're fake right now anyway, so not not too yeah. big of a worry. Still have some still have some time. Uh, I'm gonna right. go. I'll go find Emic again then, and maybe I'll you know feign some drunkenness or something just to to keep his attention directed away from the from the door. And uh, exactly where is this office again? Located in relation to where we're standing, it would be you guys are up by the bar, so it would be I got behind you, kind of over in the corner, so you'd be to your southeast, roughly, kind of over in that area. So there's not a whole lot of people standing over there because most people are around the bar, it's still pretty busy, but and, I'll, uh, I'll walk over to that door, people, so he, he seems pretty busy. I'm going to walk over to that door and just gently touch the handle again just to see if it's locked. I'm not actually going to open the door fully. I'm just going to see if it's unlocked. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, it is unlocked for some odd reason. All right, I'm going to cause a why, small... Yeah, it's I'll cause a small distraction if possible. Sounds like there's quite a few people here, but I'm not being looked at. Um, but what I'm going to do is just grab a, a pocket full of uh, copper, maybe let's say 15 copper. And I'm just going to chuck it into the air across the room, landing on the other side of the room, causing a small commotion of a uh, little windfall. You're going to make it rain. Up in this make it rain. 15 copper. There you go. Um. <laughs> I'm going to take All 15 right. out of my treasury here. Okay, go ahead and uh, give me a sleight of hand, please. And see if you throw it well or if it just uh, ends up hitting people in the head. Yeah, good enough. I mean, a couple of them go astray and bounce off the wall and everything, but everybody's like, huh, what the heck is that? And they're like, oh, cool. You know, because there's definitely your uh, standard drunkard fare that could use as many copper as possible to buy some ale. So they start to scoop it up. You're going to try to... Yeah, I'm going to take that, that moment just to slide in that door real quick. Okay. All right, you go in there. It's just a small office. Uh, there's not much there. It's just, you know, a plant in the corner. And... The desk over there, you see a chair behind the desk, and there is a drawer in the desk. One. All right, I immediately just kind of look around uh, the room to see if there's anything of, uh, of interest, just in plain sight. Uh, you don't see too much. Again, just like there's a couple, you know, paintings on the wall. There's a plant. It just looks like a pretty standard office. Again, it's very clean. It doesn't seem like there's, you know, any rats or anything in here. And it doesn't really seem like anything too out of the ordinary. So. I'll just kind of open a drawer real quick and uh, see if there's any paperwork or receipts or just something that we could use for some information. Okay. Uh, can you please give me an investigation? Definitely. Uh, you... That's actually pretty good, uh, obviously. So you do see uh, standard stuff that you would see in there, like, um, you know, bills and, and paperwork and stuff for the tavern itself. Uh, and you do see uh, a couple other things too that catch your eye. Uh, you do notice that one of them is a uh, a, a letter. Well, it's basically like a I'm going to pay you back thing for a loan that he got from somebody. So like a signing, you know, that you will pay this money back by this time for a uh, 150 gold piece loan from a uh, Istrid Horn. So that was loaned to Emic not that long ago. You're assuming to get the bar started up and everything like that. 
but also with that very good roll you do notice too that there is another paper that talks about a little contract that he has with that emic has with a group called the shard shunners that down shard shunners yeah i'll type it in there i'm slagging here for a second and that yeah. first name g that was istrid i-s-t-r-i-d i-s-t-r-i-d okay. and uh Horn. I'll write that out too. Give me a sure. Um, I'll put that in my notes to remind you. I'll, I'll show you how to have those prepared so you can just click a thing rather than having to type it out each time. You'll still have cool. to do it sometimes when you're improving, but. Estrid Horn is the one that he got a 150 gold piece loan from, so there's the little contract saying he will pay that back. Uh, and then there's also a little contract in here where he looks like has hired the services so, somehow from a group called the Shard Shutters. All right, since that's just a small piece of paper and no one's around, I think I'm going to pocket that. Is that all right? Go right ahead. Again, that such that good investigation role and everything, nobody's really paying attention to you being in there, but you probably don't want to hang out too long, though, before somebody notices the door is askew. So, but nothing else seems out, out of the ordinary. You just Everything else just seems like normal builds and stuff like that in there. So those two pieces of paper caught your eye. Sounds good. I'm going to slip out nice and quiet and then uh, put that piece of paper in my boot. Cool, cool. Nobody sees you going back out because they're just all back talking to Emic, talking to each other, having drinks, and, you know, people are setting up card games and stuff like that. Stuff's on its way. Seems like a pretty standard tavern. So. All right, I'm going to kind of do a quick head nod to Rav and... Uh, we're gonna go out the out the back door and meet up with uh, Kasha and Ghost. Yeah, I'll just break off from Emic and, and uh, head out to go see if uh, Akasha found anything. Yeah, I was gonna say while that was happening, me and Ghost are like stealthing around trying to find shit <laughs> out back. Okay. So did you guys yeah, find any didn't... rats? No, you so you actually did not out there, babe. Um, because uh, just to use your perception roll from earlier and everything too. But yeah, there's there was no rats out there so you're getting the feeling that this place is definitely clean that's for sure right, ghost doesn't smell any rats in the area anywhere no uh, he he doesn't smell any rats or anything i mean they're like if you looks over there might have been some like you know down the other alley or something like that but near froom's bruise he, he didn't catch anything so. okay. how about you elder anything in the office of interest uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is just uh, quietly share it with everyone, uh, pull out that paper when we have a moment of uh, quiet outside, and uh, private. Well, the the loan, I mean, that's that's probably just standard business unless he was using that money to, to hire these shard shunners, but my question then is maybe these shard shunners, whatever these services they were offering, it, that could have been to place rats at our place of business, so that could be... A uh, lead, uh, if we want to go that way, or you know, it's up to you guys if you really want to follow this this uh, rabbit hole or not. Had we ever heard of the shard shunners before? That's a good question. No, I, I don't think you guys would have uh, just through being in the city and stuff like that. I, I don't think so because it hasn't talked about him before this in the mod and everything. So I don't really think so. I don't think it'd be anything that you guys would have heard of yet. Okay. Okay, guys, so, yep, so you guys find that out, and you guys head back to the tavern, unless you guys wanted to do anything else? Uh, I'm good. I, I think I'm we good. Can, yeah, I think we can maybe head back and, and see if we can maybe get some information about who these shard shunners might be, if that's a route you guys want to follow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, give me one sec, guys, AFK, I'll be right back. All right. Yeah, out of game, what do you guys think? Like this, this could be a red herring, but you know, it it, I'm, I'm, it seems like at least there's a possibility, anyways. If we are going to assume that Emic uh, was definitely involved in the the rat problem that we're seeing, you know, trying to, to kind of sabotage us to to make his bar look better. If that's the case, then it's it's possible at least that he's hired these shard shunners to try to place the rats here. But it could be for you know totally unrelated means this could be all in the up and up and it was just a coincidence that he showed up at the same time what do you guys think 
I think we just go about our business, continue the main story, but uh, the second we hear of the shard shunners, I think we should kind of take this with the more serious. That's probably the way to go, because tracking these guys down when it may not mean anything at all, you know, it could just be just random business that this guy's doing. Sounds good to me. So what we were talking about, um, Sako and, and, uh, and Becky, at least for, I'm thinking probably the same, uh, that, that we probably, you know, head back to, to our bar and not necessarily, I mean, you know what, I don't know, what do you guys think? I, I'd probably go back and at least ask Woody, if not Sancho, if he's heard of them before, but unless it sounds like, heard of the Shard Hunters before, unless it sounds like there's, you know, a clear connection there that we should trace down. Um, basically, we don't have any evidence that Emic was trying to sabotage us. We just had that coincidence of timing that he showed up the same time the rats did. So, unless you know, we we have reason to believe that you know, if we, if I talk to Woody and Woody says that you know that they deal with rats or that they you know live in the sewers or something like that, then it could just be coincidence and probably wouldn't go after them too much. We'd probably just uh, you know kind of keep doing the day-to-day -day business that we're already you know working on. And Rob, of course, looking for the, the people he's looking for and whatever Eldor and Akasha are doing. What do you think? Sounds good. Yep. So I guess then, G, does, does Woody have any information about them? Has he ever heard of them before? He says that he doesn't uh, know much about them, but he has heard the name before, uh, just from listening to people uh, at the bar and everything. He's heard the name, the Shard Shunners, before, and he also heard somebody say that uh, they are known, they're a little group of people or they don't know how little, but a group of people that basically do uh, like nefarious kind of things. So, like if you want somebody scared and ran out of town, they'll do it. If, you know, they'll even attack people and you know kill people if you give them enough money. But they're basically just kind of terrorists on a little level. Basically, thugs that you get paid to shake people up and uh, minor things. You know, no, nothing too serious. But again, for the right price, they will you know take somebody out if they have to and stuff like that. This is just a small group of people, uh, and also they are known. Their symbol is a rat face. So that's been there's been a few doors and stuff. Like when they fuck with somebody, somebody's business or somebody's house or something like that, then uh, they'll brand it, like burn it into the wood. So mm -hmm. all right, well, rat symbol, rat face. Then after talking to Woody, I'll head upstairs and uh, knock on Akasha and Eldor's rooms and you know give them that information because that sounds like that's it's starting to lean towards it's you know at least probable that emic hired them to to do that what do you guys think yeah i think at night me and ghost are just gonna kind of walk around the perimeter for a couple hours just you know have ghost sniff stuff out make sure visibly you know, or you around the to, bar like go around where you're where you're seen or are you trying to like you know hide no, on a like, rooftop type of thing so see if you see if you see anybody coming up yeah like hide try to see if anybody comes up to the bar at night um similarly then just so that i'm visible um i'm gonna go on because i'm on the second floor by the uh by the balcony anyway um i think it was second floor there's a balcony there anyway i'm gonna go out on the balcony so that i'm visible 
And then, you know, basically on the opposite side of the building from where Akasha is, is hiding so that they would potentially, you know, see me go around to the other side where they can't see her, but she can see them if somebody were to show up. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, so you're going to purposely make them, purposely Funnel. make yourself scenes. So they're like, oh, uh, they're, we're going to, well, be there. So that way, if they are trying to approach from that side, that they'll approach from the other side. Exactly. Instead, where yeah, funnel, funnel them into hiding. the place where she could see them. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and what about you, Eldor, sir? I'm assuming you guys are waiting till nighttime, probably after the bar closes, before you do this. Well, the conversation with Woody would have been after the bar closes because he doesn't make himself visible during the day. So that's true. I mean, you guys could have pulled him to the side, but yeah. still, so you guys just still regular day for the rest of the day, and you guys posted yourself up in the evening. So, uh, what about you, Eldor, sir? Uh, I think I just might follow uh, Rav's lead, and uh, but I'm just going to take a few moments to myself just to kind of recuperate since I'm kind of an introvert. Okay. We can pretend so that we're you drinking, are. you know, performance check, like, uh, you know, pretend yeah. we're just being loud and boisterous out on the, uh, on the, uh, balcony. Exactly. All right, so you guys are out there talking about, you know, man, that scarecrow, he's so dangerous and he almost got us, but we burn his ass up and blah, 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 and all that stuff, just like purposely loudly talking and, yeah. uh, just, okay, just out there doing that and everything. And can you guys, after a while, you guys have just been out there hanging out for a while and everything, and you... It's been a little while, but uh, can you both give me a perception check, please? Sure. Another very good one. Uh, another one. Oh, I keep forgetting to roll in the friggin' tower. I'm not used to being a player. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting about that, too. To remind you guys, whatever, though. No problem. Um, well, Becky and Sako are used to it. <laughs> They've both been rolling, like, the right way. I just keep forgetting, you know, which yeah. ones to roll in there. Yeah, uh, Eldor, you do notice it a little bit too, because you you look over and you thought you saw a couple of uh, small, you know, people walking out in the distance from where you were, uh, but then Rav sees you kind of stop for a second, like you know your, your attention diverts away from him and your guys' conversation, which by now I'm sure is just a real conversation, but you're still just you know hanging out drinking and stuff like that, and uh, Rav does notice that he sees a couple of halflings that uh, looks like they didn't see you guys so they kind of back off a bit more and you you know see exactly where they're going but you see them start to keep you know walk in the same direction they were going which is towards the other side of the of the manor okay but they backed off a bit to where you can't see them anymore but they well, do seem to still be going that way but you did you saw a couple of short people out qui there. quietly to eldor um you know, not loud enough for them to be able to hear, of course. I'm, I'm going to, without, you know, I'm not showing, of course, that I'm watching where they're going or anything. Um, I'm going to remind Eldor that uh, Sancho said that when Emmett came in initially, that he came in with a, you know, dirty little uh, sailor-looking halfling. Uh, not necessarily sailor, but, a, you know, let's say a ruffian-type uh, halfling that he came in with. And then, uh, never mind, actually, because Akasha didn't tell us that there were halflings in the alleyway, right? What? Well the elder was the one that noticed him in the oh yeah I, I came yeah. back in and i told uh, i told you what was going on back there oh okay all right i missed that part then so um so he's surrounded by these anyways these halflings could be you know member they could be the charge hunters for all we know but hopefully akasha you know gets an eye on them when they come around the other side of the building all right, uh do we need to roll stealth ghost and akasha uh, you guys are you moving or are you just staying where you are Ghost and Akasha were hiding in the back. Yeah. You guys are just hiding there. Yeah. Then give me. Yeah, go ahead and roll a stealth. Okay. Nice. Alright, well. Do you get any right, kind well, of advantage yeah. for like being in shadows or anything? Like an elf thing? Uh oh. Huh. Uh favored terrain is urban. So, yeah. Yes. Actually we both would. Both okay. maybe we get advantage, so. Roll then, yeah. And then it'll just be the better of whatever these two rolls are for each of them. All right, well, that was much better because Ghost got a better one in the second one, too. So uh, you guys do notice that you see halflings uh, coming around the other side of the building, and it looks like they were coming, well, obviously coming towards the building, uh, but there's not two. There's actually four. Because at first you guys, uh, Robin, Eldor, they were so far away that you guys didn't see them, but you do see four halflings, kind of, uh, you know, sickly-looking ones. I mean, they're they're still like healthy, but they just don't really look like very healthy uh, creatures themselves. Four little halflings, just two males and two females. 
So, can you guys please roll initiative for me? Uh. Oh, do I put my armor back on or what? That's up to you if you want to put it back on. Remember, it's so so for uh, it's medium, right, Sako? So what's that like? Twenty minutes or something? No, no one like minute. Five minutes. Or no, it's like so one minute. Oh. It's if in it's, my bag right now. If it's right medium now. armor, then it's one minute to don it and one minute to doff it. If it's if it's light armor, it's zero. It's just an action. If it's heavy armor, it's ten minutes. So I'm yeah, guessing it's, it's just during that medium time. or light. I, well, scale, so I think it, I think is medium, so it would be a minute to put it back on. But you could have put it back on, you know, before we came out of the do or came out on the balcony, you know. Just to, it's basically whether you'd be wearing it when you're kind of relaxing or not is the question. Back at home. So it's up to you, Sako, because you were out on the balcony, yep. half expecting danger. I got so it. it's totally reasonable that you could have had it on. Yeah, I put it back on. Yeah. You went robotic there for a second, G. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, I mean, Sako, you guys did go out there knowing that danger could happen. So, I mean, it's very reasonable that he could have put his armor back on. So that's totally fine if that's what you want to do. So. You wear, don't you wear like big gray robes too? Eldor? Yeah, um, gray robe. Okay, yeah, then if you're, like, you could be presumed, it's up to you, of course, but you could be wearing it under your robe so it wouldn't be visible to anybody anyway. Yeah. So up to you on how you wanted to do that, but... Um, yeah, okay. I got it back on. There's our initiative. You got a combat music for us, G? Yep. And then I'll bring the map up for you guys. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is, because I had it, I was assuming that you guys would have been inside when they found you, so we're just going to use the tavern as the map, if that's okay. So we'll just, is that yeah, okay no with you guys? It's fine with me. Okay. Because um, I was just going to, because that's what it was, you guys, because if you guys, you guys were smart enough and stayed outside and made watch, but I was just, uh, what was going to happen is they were going to sneak in at night when you guys were asleep, so you guys would have been inside the tavern, so that's what I did. So. so Eldor and I are on the second floor where the balcony is. Um, it's up to you if you want to use that one. I mean, presumably we wouldn't be hearing any kind of a scuffle, at least initially, until something breaks out, like if, if, if uh, Akasha attacks them or they attack her or something of that sort. So, I mean, we probably wouldn't. I don't know. Like, you know what? Actually, I probably would just ask Eldor. Like, what do you think? Should we just stay here, keep an eye out, or and, and let Akasha handle that, or should we go, you know, down at least look through the windows, you know, pretend that we're not paying attention, kind of thing? I would just say just uh, keep a loose eye, just keep an eye, and if it looks like she's gonna have some heat, then jump down. Well, we can't see it. from here. She's. It'll be the other side of the building, and we may not be able to hear if it's quiet. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Do Ghost and I get? Like a surprise attack, since they can't see us? Yeah, actually, you are going to uh, get one. Um, I guess, yeah, you would for sure, because you have your bow. And they were coming up around the way. So, actually, yeah, since they're inside, then we'll just say the ghost does, too. So, well, because hey, okay, since you guys okay. both rolled so good. So. I'm, I'm confused, then. They're, they're so. breaking into the bar, is what they're trying to do? Yeah, well, that's... Uh, I mean, well, if you want to, just to make it easier. Well, either way, we can just use that as that that as the map. But if you want to, you guys can still say that you were outside, though. So you would be able to hit them with a, a ranged weapon, babe. But uh, um, depending on exactly where they're at, then I don't know if Ghost would be able to, because if he's close enough. But because you would have to be within your movement range to do that, right, G? Like his battle would actually start. Well, yeah. Ready. I mean, if if they're with, if he's within thirty feet, I don't know how far away the next alley over where where Akasha was hiding is. But if they're breaking in, we would presumably hear the door open downstairs because the bar's empty. So if we hear, you know, a window break or a door, you know, like basically Eldor and I would hear it is what I'm saying. So we could potentially, with a perception check, hear it, run downstairs, you know, and so on, so that Akasha isn't by herself. Okay. I was just trying to narratively uh, square Eldor and I involving ourselves if, if we weren't otherwise expecting them to try to break in or anything. All right, so okay. let's just say that they are going around to a window that they're going to, that you're, because well, you're, you're assuming I know that's what they're doing because you're up on the on the balcony so you're assuming they're going into the window below you but you are going to get uh you'll get a shot a free shot on one of them so as they try to break in and then you guys uh, eldor and, and rav could hear the window breaking and also you could hear you know akasha probably saying what the hell or whatever and then firing an arrow you might be able to hear that so well i was going to say if ghost isn't close enough to actually get to one he'd probably just like start roaring at them and i would shoot them so okay or you can have <laughs> yeah, like, or a little half leg sitting in their pants. Whatever kind of thing. So. <laughs> okay, let me add everybody to the map here. You could maybe, if you're, you feeling, guys, if you're feeling generous, you, you could maybe get a... Uh, sorry, do you go ahead? What were you saying? Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say you guys are starting from the other side. But... 
Uh, Eldor and I would be on the stairs coming down, so. Yeah, so you guys should be up over there. Okay. And so we'll just say that they were trying to come in the north window that Ghost is looking at up there. So. Oh, I see. Okay, so they didn't go all the way around. They came to the north side. Okay, that makes sense. And I'm just putting you guys inside here, but um, this is roughly where you guys would have been. And you can, uh, whenever you're ready, honey, go ahead. Actually, I didn't even... See. You could have her outside. I mean, that's where she was. If she was outside to the north or something, then, you know, she could be ba basically where they are because she wasn't inside, narratively. Yeah. So if you want to, you can say that you were like, you guys were out there, babe. All right. And that you guys get to snuck a shot. So um, can you see them on the combat tracker now? Or four of them? We see four unidentified creatures, yes. Okay. I don't see anything. Then... On the combat tracker? They're not on the map, they're on the combat tracker. No. Yeah, I don't know the map, yeah, hang on. Say that they're coming from over here. Where are those stairs right, outside? That doesn't make sense with the map. Why would they have drawn it that way? Did the original map have the stairs outside? Oh, yeah, it's, okay, it is. Th so, that's odd. The stairs go up to a second floor door from the outside, and there's no... Oh, you know what? Okay, okay, I understand now. So, uh, all right, um, this this actually will be relevant for a second, so I'll, I'll need to, to describe it real quick. The stairs are on the outside. They're not on the inside, meaning that if you're inside the bar, you can't go upstairs. You have to go out the front door or out one of the doors, walk around to the stairs, and then go up the stairs to get to the lodgings and stuff. Does that make sense? Okay, so everybody's outside then. Yeah. You guys can just go rushing down the stairs and be yeah. outside. So basically, okay. if you look at it, you can tell by the other maps too. If you look at the second floor, you can see it on there, how the stairs actually go up to a door on the second floor. Okay. And that's that's where you can see it from. And then there's stairs from the inside of the second floor that go up to the third floor and so on. But there's no stairs from the ground floor that go up to this to anywhere above. Just the cellar that goes to the basement. That's it. Cool. It's like a like a um, you know restaurants and stuff like especially in popular cities will have uh, you know a lot of businesses will have homes on top of it like an apartment. Well, in fact, they're just like your gym basically. Yeah. So yeah. same idea. All right. Anyway. Yeah, the second apartment here, you have to go outside the gym to get to it. So yeah. I have a connection to the gym, but there's an outside door, too. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. So uh, you get a free shot, babe, and then the actual combat will, rounds will start. Okay. Well, first off, Ghost is going to roar at them and try to intimidate them. Actually, Ghost does get... So you guys are on the floor. He gets a hit, too. So. Oh, well, sweet. Because you guys are all... He is within melee. As, range, as long as it was so. just a matter of him being within 30 feet, or technically 50 feet. Because can't he run 30 feet and then pounce another... Or jump another 20, or, or is that... Or does he have to run 10 or something? I don't remember. Uh, I think it's... Let's see. It's, uh, uh, is the map coming up? Oh, oh, we're on the... We're on the... Um, uh, troll... Troll Skull F1, Taco. But, it's, so, gee, if you just share it again, it'll go to everybody. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, so then he's gonna run up and pounce on the first guy, then. Right, right. Or at least try to. Okay. Uh, which guy? Do you have that map now, Sako? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Which one is that? That's... No idea what it is. Uh, gee, if you, if you just identify them... Uh, well, if they have names or yeah. something you don't want to identify, that's fine. If they're just like halfling one, halfling two, etc. If you identify them, then we'll be able to get the individual differences. Like if it's... Oh, just yeah, that's, uh, I'll just go ahead and ID it anyway, because we can just assume... I mean, you guys did sneak around and get that contract letter and everything, so you probably did see some names. Okay. So. I didn't know they'd actually so have names. One, I thought yeah, they were just going to be, exactly. you know. Okay. Danica yeah. Fiddlewick. <laughs> Race my driver. Halflings have such stupid names. <laughs> oh, apparently the pair of these and... are... That could be okay, potentially he, useful. Uh, he succeeded, babe, but you still get a claw attack, right? Uh, bite. Yes. Bite, okay. Could probably fit an entire halfling's head in his mouth. Hmm. <laughs> And it hits. Uh, 
beasts. Yep. Okay. So Ghost goes to tackle him, but doesn't knock him over. But still, while he's got his paws up on him, he takes a nice bite into his shoulder. Uh, but. that. Nope. But it looks like that actually huh, didn't even damage him. Hang on. Let me look at this. Or resist it at least. So let me see. This battle music sucks. Super low tempo. <laughs> I'll find a different one. It, it, I assume this is just the one that came with Sirenscape, right? Yeah, this was just one of the ones. Yeah. The oh, Sirenscape, the Sirenscape music for a lot of some of them are really good, and some of them are just like like this for battle music is really, you know, low tempo, not not very exciting. Um, so usually for the for the battle music, I'll just use you know something I find uh, elsewhere, and then uh, use the like the background sounds, like basically just the background music for non battle scenes are usually pretty good. So anyway, I like it. It's like fighting at Nordstrom during Halloween. <laughs> it does, yeah, it's it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. This is the music. Hey, it's the bird one again with the squawking birds. Oh, man. It's really quiet, though, G, if you want to bump it up just a tiny bit. Okay. All right. Um, I think what it is on here, but you guys, that doesn't even make sense, um, that it would have to be... Oh, wait, I turned it up a little bit. Is that too much? That's fine so far. <laughs> okay. That cackle's funny. And... Um... It says on here that, but that wouldn't be fair because you guys don't have it. I'll just apply the damage anyway. That they would be, it looks like, yeah, immune to regular non magic melee damage like slashing and piercing and stuff, but that doesn't make any sense for this point of the game. So Wait, what? How would they be from what? Do they have like magic items or something? Um, Unless they're ghosts or. Now you. Okay, okay. Don't spoil anything. Don't say this out loud. But you, as the DM, uh, looking at because I basically have to walk you through how to look for that in Fantasy Grounds. We'll look at the type that they are and don't say it. But look at the type. If it says that they're humanoid, then they're unless it's a magic item or something, then they don't have that kind of immunity. If it says that they're something like undead or something else, something that would have immunity, then that would be different. But don't say that out loud. It actually does make sense, but at this point, then. Like it, it doesn't really make sense because they looks like it says you know immune to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. And then it says magic, so I'm assuming that you have to have magic items to hurt them, right? Otherwise, they're immune to regular combat damage, like physical damage. Yes, yes. And there's a reason why, which okay. you guys will find out during this fight. I just don't want to spoil it. That's totally fine. So. As long as there's a reason, then it's okay. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't an error in the coding of how uh, uh, Waterdeep was built in here. Um, yeah. As soon as we heard the noise and we're running towards the stairs, I would have been applying a poison to my weapon anyways. So. Okay. That that'll help, but uh... so so should we just say that that would be um, since you know it's not fair since you guys don't have ma magic items yet would that just be full damage or resisted damage do you think from the height? we have otherwise yeah we don't really we we probably were supposed to at some point pick up like you know if we didn't finish exploring that uh, that um, I think it was a Zentarum hideout or something like that. Uh, maybe we were supposed to have picked them up at some point, or maybe we were supposed to have gone to buy them or whatever. If it means that we can't finish this fight, then I would say probably just handle it as resistance. But that would be that would be a fourth wall question that you wouldn't ask us as players, of course. It would be a question you would kind of decide as a DM beforehand. Um, but that it's it's totally fine in this particular case. If it if it still means we can finish the fight, it's not like we're gonna these guys are gonna somehow beat us. Um, you know, just because they're immune to anything we do, then yeah, I would say go ahead and just change it to resistance. Yeah, that's what we'll do then. Okay. So, the bites uh, did hurt him, you look, but but it seems like not as much as it should have, so. Alright, well, I'm going to cast Hail of Thorns. Nice. Okay. And they succeeded. All of them? The three that attacked. Seriously? Yeah. Um, Three successes. See. I think they take, yeah, they take half as much on the save, so that's fine. Okay. Uh, if I hit, so let's find out. Oh, you still got to roll the hit too. Yeah. Ooh, natural twenty in there. You yes. rolled really well, nineteen, twenty, and fifteen. Awesome. So at least one of them will take full damage, basically, because it'll be crit off of half damage from resistance. All right. So. Oh, I need to hit that, and then that. Danica, got it. 
Wow, okay, that's loud. so so gee, there's no that's you know, part Mac of why truck just hit a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> so so part of why that's the other reason that I usually use YouTube for background music during combat is because the auto sounds that that volume you can't adjust individually. So if you want to just yeah. stop the uh, the background music and load up uh, a different one from here, I'll give you one even. Um, then you can turn the volume down for um, for Sirenscape to a regular level, so the auto sounds sound good, and then you can just use a you know a, a different background music. Uh, let me find you one here real quick. Uh, go ahead though. Just just keep going. I don't want to. I don't want to take too long. Uh, um, you know, on middle steps here. Oh, wait, I'm gonna step back a little, and then I'm done. Okay. Yeah, and that was definitely a nice uh, arrow to Annika, who. Let me take a look. Yeah, she definitely took a good hit there. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm gonna have to change that then. So that, would have been... that actually, that, that volume level is okay for the for the background. At least for me, that wasn't too loud. Uh, but you can use here, load this up, and just play that for your background music instead. What's the perm on that, Sako? Oh, you oh did, no. okay, no, I, I see what you're yeah, 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 I just clicked on it just to, I made a mistake, I've made a mistake clicking it. You're fine. I was just curious what the perm was, but that's that's how you're reminding yourself that that's one that you always have prepared? Yeah, it's okay. a permanent spell that's just part of uh, his thing. Sure. That's what the asterisk was meant to represent initially too, so you can delete the asterisk if you want. If you'd rather use the, you know, pound sign or something like that, it makes no difference. Totally up to you. I don't know why it's clicking it again. I didn't click it again. Um, I don't know. No big deal though. I mean, it showed up All in right, the comment. Uh, said... Go ahead, sorry, Ergy. I was just gonna say, uh, you said critical hits even when resist damage, right? No, they would still, well, you would still roll the damage, still you would still do the double damage, and then the resistance would apply. So it oh, would be 19. I, I, because, again, these things, can you guys hear that? You're cutting out a little bit, but yeah, I can hear you. Okay, you guys got background music? Oh. That loaded from YouTube? No. Um, How do I pump it through? Yeah, you would. I, I use it on a separate client, so that's probably why. Uh, that's okay, G. Don't. I, I would say, you know what? Uh, what I'll do is I'll throw it on mine. I can put the background music on mine, so you can just have the sounds and stuff playing for now. Okay. And then we'll, we'll worry about that later, so we're not taking too much time. Go ahead, G. Go ahead, keep running your game. Okay, because I was going to say, um, she would have done 19. It, she rolled a 19 damage, but it only took four damage to the. It only did four damage to the thing from whatever the. Uh, uh, some kind of thing was because again they have full immunity to it, so it didn't just do half. So like, what? So so what it was? Use, so... No, what it what it did is it was doing the full immunity and then only adding the magic damage from Hail of Thorns, which was four. So okay. so that's what happened there. So you would need to you're you're probably going to need to be manually adjusting these for simplicity's sake for right now because yes, um, yeah. yeah. So you would just add six damage to it because you know you would take the nineteen divided by two, round it up. So a total of 10 damage, so just add 6 damage to yeah. to that one that it hit. And then it would still be half damage to the others, um, which wouldn't be half twice, so I guess it would just be... Shit, that's where we're dealing with, with cutting it in half twice, and that you're not really supposed to do that. The Hail of Thorns, it looked like, uh, did correctly to everybody that hit. I just okay. wanted to make sure that her arrow... Okay. Because with, yeah, with yeah, the crit yeah. on it, I wanted to make sure I got it right. Yeah. Everybody else took the regular damage from Halo Thorns. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, the ones that it hit. Kelso Fiddlewick didn't get hit by it, but... Um, All it right. didn't, it didn't, though, because, well, shit, this is, this is, it's going to be complicated here. Like, it'd probably be easier if you change it to resistance, but it's, I can't remember exactly. Like, you pretty much would have to go into their effects, remove the... Yeah, probably for simplicity's sake, because you're going to have to be doing the math on every single individual hit until they're all dead or whatever we're going to do with this fight. So it might be easier to just take the immunity off completely, because you can you can change it to resistance, but you have to code it correctly. And off the top of my head, I don't remember what that looks like, so I'd have to like I'd have to see it to do it basically. I'll just remember to cut the damage in half, right? Yeah, that's fine. If you just just have, remove yeah. the remove the effect for their immunity, uh, so that it's not listed there anymore, and then it'll apply the full damage, and you just cut it in half. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. Do do do. And it is your turn, sir. Your turn. Uh, okay. okay. I'm just getting the music loaded up. Um, all right. Then, since I am, you know, rubbing a, a rag full of poison on the on the head of my spear, 
behind Eldor on the stairs, and these stairs are pretty tall. I can't get past Eldor on them. I'm going to have to launch my spear over Eldor's head. Turn this down a bit. All right, is that good? Okay. Everybody hear that? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That part's quiet all of a sudden, but uh, here, I'll just give it to the... Oh, this isn't the battle music one. Doesn't matter. Anyway, um, so from the top of the stairs, I'm going to launch him at uh, Danica, just because she's kind of straight in a line from me. Um, so uh, she has not acted yet, right? Danica has not acted yet? No, none of them have. All right, then I'm going to get advantage on the attack. Uh, and I'm going to throw it right at her dumb face. God damn it. Fucking... I think I just should... Stop using wireless mice when I'm trying to play. Here we go. Uh, 17. Is that hit? Hits. All right, then. Uh, with my poison, too. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bleed her as well, actually. Uh, one of my superiority attacks. Um, which she'll have a... She has to make a DC 16 con check um, or con save. Uh, that roll right there. Does she fail or succeed? Fail. Failed. All right, then there's that, and she also is now bleeding. I'm going to jack this bitch up, uh, throwing the spear straight at her neck. So, uh, actually, I already rolled the attack, so uh, ignore the out of ammo because I already rolled it. So, there's the damage roll. Nice. Uh, and now she's bleeding as well, so. Uh, and my poison is on there. She has the bleeding. Cool. All right. Did I put the bleeding on there twice? No, it's on there once. Okay. All right. Um, and then I'll just I'll pull a dart out. So in case I can't get past. Um, uh, uh, I did use the attack action, but I think my martial strike for my bonus attack is only for melee. Yeah, it is only for melee. That sucks. Okay. All right. Then I can't do anything else right now. So I'm going to wait behind Eldor until Eldor's out of the way. All right. Nice, good spear hit to her, and she is. Uh, she definitely got hurt for sure. She's bloodied, so she's still alive and dangerous. But that definitely hurt her, even with being half resisted. All right, Eldor, it's your turn. Sir. All right, taking a step back and casting Bane. Okay. Twenty feet away. I'm gonna move back just a little bit more. 25 away right there, and casting bait on the... Sorry, I'll mark off my use. There we go. Uh, first level bait, not, le not second level. They... All three failed. So, yeah. three they failed. So, Bryn, Kelso, and Danica. Alright, I'm going to click the effect now. Nice. Any bonuses for you? Uh, at this time, no. Just uh, swapping out and get ready. All right. And the three of them seem like they're fumbling around a little bit more. Like, not holding their weapons as efficiently and everything. So, and next up is Stasher's turn. And he sees Kitty Cat over there. So, let's see what Yeah, he's going to see if he can hit him. and does not hit, but he gets multi-attack, so he's going to try again. Uh-oh. Ghosty. Second one was a crit. He did, and Ghost is deafened for the next 1v4 rounds, so poor little kitty cat can't hear nothing. No, so, the Dasher getting bit by the big old mean cat over here who definitely doesn't like you notice that they're definitely very weary of him for sure. And he takes a short sword, swings once and misses, but then just comes back up and actually gets a good hit on the poor kitty cat. That was her bleeding damage that just Seven applied to Danica? Bleeding damage to Danica. Yeah. So, as long as it automatically uh, applied, then she's okay. 
they wouldn't have resistance to that, right? So that nope. would be full damage, right? Correct. That's not an armor base at all. So yeah. unless it was so a magical effect, that means do. you know resistance to uh, bleeding, which is force damage. So if she has resistance to force damage, then yes. The immunity was just to non-magical damage. It was basically for slashing, piercing, and bludgeoning, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, then yep. she wouldn't have resistance non to that. Yeah, force is a pretty yep. pretty uncommon one to resist. Very few, not many things have resistance to force. And Danica, actually, when you see, you look over at her, and you see that she starts to look uh, even uglier than she did before. And she starts to look like her skin's kind of splitting open a bit. And she starts to grow fur and a long nose. And this whiskers start coming out. And uh, <laughs> these nice long claws. And she, you look at, she is not not a rat, but she's a, a rat uh, humanoid kind of hybrid thing. So she's still about as tall as she was before. But she's fuzzy. And she's still walking upright, but, you know, long nose, like teeth, a... the claws. Okay, so not a werewolf then, but a were-rat is what we're looking at? She's transforming into a yeah, were-rat. Like a, like a Jennifer Love Hewitt. <laughs> exactly. Jennifer Love Hewitt? Oh, does she have like a rat face or something? I don't think I've ever looked yeah. much above her neck. <laughs> generally, <laughs> generally for her, but you know, it's, I don't think I've ever even noticed that she has a face. I'm assuming this is the thing that tried to eat through our walls. Oh shit, they were, there were bigger rat sure, teeth, but... huh? You saw bigger rat teeth, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that makes sense why sure, they were resistant. Would they, <laughs> yeah, that they, that they would help. They probably have small rat friends as well, too, to help. So, uh, the shape change was a full action, but they have multi-attack, but that means the entire action was taken, though, right? Yeah, so, yeah, anytime, anytime if you yeah. use, uh, basically, multi-attack is you use your action to do that, and that would be all of your attacks, just like a, a player would be. Now, in some cases, if it's something like putting themselves out, like it was for the Scarecrow, then I might still give them just a regular attack, um, you know, basically where they have to do something somewhat trivial, um, but that's just, you know, kind of on the fly, you would decide that as a, as a DM. Transforming right, would good. be a pretty significant change, though, so. Yeah, that's definitely going to take a full turn, then, for sure. So she is in a rat hybrid form. Right, uh, Ghost is just going to disengage and go back okay. this way. Okay. 20, 25, 30. He's just gonna go stand behind me because he's not looking so good. Because he's a scaredy okay. dog. <laughs> yeah, well, that hit really hurt. <laughs> well, it was a crit. It shows that it's heavy, so he's got to be bleeding pretty bad. He's yeah. got eight hit points left. Ouch. And so. it's your turn, babe. Yes. Now, I still have that up, so these guys getting hit again. Let's see that. Yeah, Bane. Uh, all right, Bryn and Dasher succeeded, but Danica failed. All right, so let's see if we hit. Okay, and the bow attack missed uh, Danica. But uh, hit the other two. And it, okay, Dasher hit and Bryn hit. All right. So I take. Her off. Uh, you just put her back on. It automatically hit untargeted there. There you go. Okay. So Brandon Dasher. Yeah. I assume it did automatically anyway. Damage. Nice. All right. Uh, that. Yeah, that's it. All right. So they took some more damage from those thorns. And it is Brandon's turn. So let's see. Oh, I meant to ask, are they humanoids? Uh, shit, uh, I, I, they, I assumed I, that they were, and I had applied my, it was only two damage, so it would have been one damage total, but I applied my, uh, my favorite enemy. Yeah, I didn't well, to remember that they time. were, would it be like they were in their halfling form, so like, would that count? No, you specifically would look at their, so how you would narratively handle that is you would say that uh, the impact of the, you know, that benefit seems to not be having its, its full effect, which would give us kind okay. of an indication that they aren't humanoids, but how you would decide that is you would look at their type, and if their type is listed as humanoid, then you're good. If the type is listed as like, uh, you know, monstrosity or beast or anything else, then, it, then the, those bonuses would not apply. Okay. But narratively, again, you would tell it to us as in that, uh, you know, the, the uh, effects that this should have had don't seem to be useful. The same way that you would describe resistance narratively, same idea. 
Okay, well here it does see like on their actual NPC sheet, it does refer to them as small humanoid halfling okay. ship. Then it's perfect. So. Then then they are humanoid and it does work. Okay. So you wouldn't say anything. So good. Good good. So alright, it is Bryn's turn and she sees that Yeah, probably so she sees that Rob had through a spear at Danica, so she is going to see if she can shoot him crossbow, as a hand crossbow, so. That is not Fox it. is in here, I can, I can whistle. <laughs> That's true. And, uh, let's see. I just jump out of the way as he shoots at me then. Let it click off of the door. And, uh, does multi attack work for melee too? I mean, for missile too? Yeah. Because it says it just can't be two bites. Uh, okay. well, so, yeah. no, which. Okay, that's that's it. You would look at what the description is for, for multi attack. Usually it'll say. Uh, this creature gets uh, two attacks, one with its bite and one with its claw or whatever, and that's what you would apply. It would do that. Yeah, it says, it says they make two attacks, only one of which can be a bite. Perfect, so. yeah, so she can do two shots then, yeah. Okay. So they... Just a crossbow bolt at you, G. Not too bad, though. Get you a little arrow in your leg, but... Nothing too serious. Yeah, these guys could be dangerous, though. Alright, it's Kelso Fiddlewick's turn. And he is also going to change. He does the same thing that Danica did, and you see him morph into a rat human hybrid. Okay. And it is a new round. So it is. Your turn, G. All right, so having seen first when they f all four approached, um, I wanted to do this earlier and I forgot to mention it, but uh, first I, I would just free action. I would shout over them to keep one alive. Um, and then second, I want to... So because they have last names on here, I can see that Danica and Kelso are related, but just in looking at the four of them um, to find a weakness, in fact, to, to identify which one we should keep alive, basically, I would have looked at the four of them to see if there's any recognition between them. Like, do two of... You know, for example, if I could notice something like two of them were you know, wearing the same ring, maybe they were married, or if two of them look similar, maybe they're brother and sister, things like that. So can I make a perception check to see if I would have been able to recognize that Danica and Kelso are, are related? Yeah. Okay. Perception, so, please. Yeah, the, what, I, what I'm looking for is I'm, I'm looking for a weakness to exploit. So if we, you know, if the two of them are alive and I can keep one of them at spear point to get the other one to stop, you know, something like that, to, to interrogate it or whatever else we need to do. All right, so 16. With that roll, with that roll, Got them. Uh, you, you don't need to. Thing. So I would say, me personally, how I would handle that is just, yeah, if I recognize that they look the same, that's all. Or yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. Is when you look at them, you, you they do look like they are similar enough that they could be blood related. You're assuming that they are. Uh, and then you also notice that, like, he, that Kelso um, kind of, not like, you know, freaked out, but seemed more concerned when Danica got hit than he did, you know, when uh, Dasher got attacked by ghosts and stuff. So, cool. obviously he didn't like ghosts. Ghosts freaked him out. But um, he did notice that he did care a little bit more when Danica got hit and that they do look pretty similar. That's that's you perfect. That's probably, They could be blood family. Yeah, and how you how you describe that is perfect for how to handle it as a DM and that he looked like I noticed him surprised and looked, you know, more concerned when I, you know, chunked my spear at, uh, at Danica. Um, that basically would narratively give me the explanation that I was looking for, so perfect. All right, then, having seen that these guys are, are a little more dangerous than just four little halflings, I'm going to spark one of my bombs and throw it behind them. Uh, it's Actually, it would be off the map a little bit. Uh, it's a 30-foot radius, so it's a big, big area. Um, but I'm going to throw it far enough behind them to blow the, to, to explode around them. Uh, there's nobody else in the street, right? I'm not going to hit, like, civilians since it's late at night, right? Yeah, there, there's nobody out walking around. You might hit a stray cat or something, but Toon will live, possibly. I hope it's Toki. I hope it's Toki. <laughs> He's already dead from being thrown off an airship. So. He kept coming back. That little fucker just, just wouldn't give up, no matter how many times we chucked him off of airships. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, it is a big ass bomb. It's my biggest one, um, so it's gonna explode. All of them will have to make dex saves. Uh, they have to be 14s uh, for half damage if they if they make it. So I'm just going to roll it here. There it is. Uh, saves. All right, and... we have uh, Bryn and Kelso succeeded. Dasher and Danica failed. All right, so I'm gonna roll the damage. It'll automatically. So they're basically just a massive fireball explosion that blows up behind all of them. Um, and to kind of covering over them. Uh, the the ones that failed will have an ongoing damage effect on them as well. So here's the damage. It's fireball damage. Hell yeah, that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, the one, okay, so oh, perfect actually. So the one that's still conscious. Now, this isn't, you know, this isn't necessarily non-lethal non damage, uh, but did Kelso succeed or fail? Uh, Kelso succeeded. Okay, so he's not caught on fire then, um, but he is hopefully, you know, I was hoping that he would still, at least he or Danica would still be alive to try to use as a uh, uh, leverage, uh, but Kelso still being alive and he's in his uh, uh, wear rat form, right? Yes. Shit, I rolled really fucking well on that. Look at that. Alright. Um, yeah, um, that, that your explosion uh it knocked out there. Well, Dasher is not moving, and uh, let's see, Bryn. Yep, Dasher and Bryn are not moving, uh, so they're, you know, you assume that they're not going to do too much more, and Danica got fucking blown to bits. She is dead as shit. Oh, so. well, shit. <laughs> I was hoping to use her as leverage. All right, well, then, uh, I'm, I'm... She got an instant death, so she's knows as fuck. Okay. The other two are unconscious. Okay. So. Well, I'm going to run down and yank my spear out of her, you know, exploded body then, uh, and then point it towards uh, uh, Kelso and tell him not to move, and that's it for my turn. Okay. That was an expensive fucking bomb, so, <laughs> so hopefully hopefully it was worth it. Okay, um, next is... Eldor's turn, looks like. Um, oh, I'm sorry, yep, it was Eldor's turn. I accidentally skipped you, sorry. So I'm I'd already hit my turn off, yeah. There we go. All right, I'm going to cast a Healing Word uh, onto Ghost. Uh, Ghost looks like he's in pretty bad shape right now. Okay. You can't see him where you're at, though. He's pretty far from you, Sako. I don't know if I need to be line of sight specifically. It's it's a weaker spell for healing. It'll tell like you, though. Read the read see. the description. Click the info and read the description. Uh, so so you could walk up and rob. Yeah, yeah like if you come up really next good. to me, then you'd be able to see him. And those, they would have been blown around a little bit anyway. So if they are not even in that line anymore, they probably would have been, you know, Uh, yeah, I just went up to Danica to get my spear so. back and then turned back towards uh, okay. uh, Fiddlewick. But if Eldor goes into Fiddlewick's range and then out of it again, he'd get an opportunity attack. So can he... Do you, I can see him from here now, right? Yeah, as long as he can see him past me. Can he see Ghost from around that corner, G? Well, yeah, he... He's... He's, yeah, uh, he is line of sight from around that, I think so, from around that corner. And the two halflings are on the ground anyway, you can see over him because you're seven-something feet tall anyway. And you can see over Rob as well. Over and is the, a foot or two. what's the range on healing word, Eldor? Checking. You're, you're 40 feet away from Ghost right now. 60 feet right now. Cool. Uh, actually, shoot, it says casting time one bonus action, so this has to be my bonus action. Yeah. Cool. So you'll right, still have a regular gonna, action too. Yeah, what I'm going to do is just a regular attack onto the uh, Kelso, uh, but uh, I want to just go for a non-lethal. Okay, so you're going to shoot at him from where you're at? Yes, yeah, shoot at him from where I'm at, okay. and then um, after that, as my bonus action, I'm going to cast a healing word onto Go. Okay, go ahead and roll the attack on Kelso. He is in rat form, too. And it hits. Nice little arrow in his arm there. Got his attention. And let's see, he's probably pretty roughed up by now. Let's see. Yeah, he's he's beyond bloodied. He's looking pretty, pretty beat down. He could still be dangerous, but he also looks like he's... Uh, Kind of lost his heart too after watching all of his friends die, but he is still up and around and about. So, and then you can go ahead and roll that uh, right. heal on Ghosty. Nice. 
four damage shield. At about a ten, I think he took some. Good. He is looking a little bit better. He looks up and barks at you and wags his tail. It's <laughs> gonna make Becky so mad. <laughs> you got a campaign, campaign linked annoying joke about your little pet. You just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost is gonna go on a murderous rampage while we're sleeping. Uh huh. He's gonna kill all the embassies. He's gonna, he's gonna morph into his final form, a mastiff. <laughs> <laughs> a mastiff that's yeah. bees. It is Ghost's turn. Yeah. That's me. Are we? 45. Perfect. Alright, he's gonna go try to pounce on this dude then. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, pounce. He failed, so he's on his ass. And he's not gonna bite, he's just gonna stand on top of him and hold him down. Okay. All right, and the so, rare rat is down, being pinned by the kitty, and obviously pretty freaked out by the cat. Well, he was he was knocked prone, G, but that attack is supposed to be that he knocks the ghost would knock them prone and then essentially step back. So you'd have ghost roll a grapple attack instead of his bite. He's using his his action to do his pounce, but instead of the attack, he's basically going to grapple. All right, what do okay. I roll for that? Uh, on Ghost's sheet, you would make a strength check, and then on the uh, on Kelso's sheet, G on the combat tracker, uh, you will make a strength save or dex save, whichever it is. And then since he's a halfling, you probably have advantage on it actually, because they don't. I'm not sure if all halflings get that. I know that you got it, Becky. Do you remember why? For uh, for Sarah. Um, because I had that nimbleness, halfling nimbleness, or whatever. Yeah, I think that's all halflings, though, is it, or was it specifically the sub race you chose? Do you remember? I think it was something that I chose. Okay. All right. Then in that case, he won't have advantage, G. Uh, but the check was not a great one. So if he beats no. a seven, no. Did you already roll it? Uh, yeah, he didn't succeed. And he does have halfling nimbleness, but that just makes it to where he can move through stuff that's bigger than him. He doesn't. Have, oh, okay. It doesn't say anything about. Then. Okay. It doesn't Sarah say anything had... about. Uh, no. But he yeah. he did his a dex check and um, not by much, but Ghost did beat him. They were both crappy rolls, but Ghost beat him, so he's he's pinned. Wow. <coughs> Good that shot. Seven. All right, now it's your um, turn, man. Let's see. How far am I? 30. Uh, I can get within five feet of Ghost, right? So that's... That's still touch range, right? Five feet? Yeah, touch range. Five, five feet is touch range, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ghost, is, remember, Ghost would have technically pounced on him. He'd still actually be right here. He wouldn't actually be in Fiddlewick Square. Right, so He's I'm just basically pinning him. Ghost, then. All right, and Ghost is looking good. All right. And not even hurt anymore. Yeah, that's it. Now, since he's grappled, G, um, he could, he'd have to try to break the grapple. So he would have to use his action to break the grapple. That's what he's going to do. So that would just be... It'd be a contest. Uh, a that would be... It'd be Kelso would have to make a strength check, or strength or dex, whichever one you prefer in this case, since he's halfling. Yeah. Um, and Ghost would make a strength save to try to hold on to it. You, you basically would just flip it as the previous one. And... <laughs> last time Ghost won by two points, and this time Ghost won by one point. He got a 15, and Kelso got a 14, so... Nice. He did not get up. Even in his rat form. A free action, so. I'm just going to shout that he's he's pretty strong, so we need to keep, you know, be ready because he could break out of that. Apparently these and tough little or rats, these little rats are tough. Alright. I am... How badly is he looking? He is... Uh, he, he's bloodied for sure, and he looks like he's within, two, you know, two or three whacks of death or one really good whack or, you know... Okay, um, I'm gonna try something, guys. You know, you by all means, you can you know finish him off if we need to. Uh, I'm gonna step over the body here uh, of uh, which one is that, uh, Bryn? So, G, if you don't mind, can you move her just one to the left? Because I'm I'm just gonna step over her as all basically. Um, you know, her her yeah, exploded yeah. body, yeah. Um, and I'm gonna hold my spear point down at his neck because he's pinned on the ground by a ghost, right? 
Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm holding my spear point down on his neck, and there's you know there, there's this this uh, kind of ugly green liquid on the spear point, so it's clear that this is going to hurt pretty bad if I if I just push it slightly. But I'm gonna hold it down to his neck. And I'm gonna tell him to stop struggling, and if he's if he's amenable and and helpful, then we might be able to to uh, help his friends here. Does he? How badly were they blown to bits? Because he doesn't necessarily know that Eldor couldn't bring them back. Like he might does. Does he see that they were unconscious, or does he know that they're dead, dead? Because Danica's is the only one that's dead, dead, right? The other yes, the other two are unconscious. Yet? And uh, I mean, he could look around from where he's at and see pieces of Danica. So okay, all right. So his sister. Is... He would know that she's dead as <laughs> shit. But the other, the other two are still in one piece. They're they're burned as shit and they're unconscious. But all right. They could still be safe, but Danica <laughs> was instant death. So she's. And that means you can't. You know, unless you have special stuff, you can't res instant death, right? You'd need actual resurrection. Death, yeah, so. you couldn't... So basically, so if they're just unconscious, like the other two are, then Eldor could bring... Well, actually, any of us could bring them back, uh, but Eldor could heal them, and they would be conscious again and be okay. But if she's blown to bits, we would need an actual uh, resurrection. Um, or... Resurrection or revivify. Revivify would do it, too. Um, which I d I'm pretty sure Eldor doesn't have yet. I don't think he get that to like five or something. No, um, like spare the dying. That's it. Yeah. So he could spare the dying to keep the other two, but but basically, I don't have the the trump card that I was hoping for is that you know to bring his sister back, but because he seemed that she's blown to bits. So so I'll probably have disadvantage on this G, but I'm gonna try to uh, uh, intimidate him into uh, stopping resisting, um, so that we can get answers from him with the 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 uh what's in it for him with the, the benefit for him being that we would bring his friends back and i'm not going to mention his sister but just you know we'll bring his friends back is how i'll say that and then if he you know recognize or thinks anyways that his sister could potentially survive then then good um but i'll probably have disadvantage because his sister is blown up but then do you get advantage because ghost is on top of him growling at him <laughs> I was just going to say that if it's an intimidation, if you were going to go with intimidation, Ghost is on top of him, so you would probably have advantage, which would even it out. Uh, or are you going to try to go with persuasion? It's up to you. I would definitely go intimidation in this case, yeah. Just because basically it's up to you on how much self preservation this guy has. If he is expecting to die because of what just happened to the rest, then he, prob then he may not care. Uh, but if he, you know, wants to live, if he, that's up to you as a DM to decide if he wants to live, then, you know, how, you know, however the role would be. Um, but I'll, I'll roll it flat then if you think with the advantage from Ghost, disadvantage from his sister. Sound good? Yeah, because that's what I would say. Go ahead and roll it flat because I would say, yeah, uh, advantage from Ghost because as you can see, he's a rat and he doesn't like cats. So. Oh, I didn't think about <laughs> they, that. They've been freaking out of Ghost the entire time. Yeah, so. I rolled really shitty though. <clears throat> yeah, not too good, but he does. He actually reverts back into his halfling form. And then he actually stops and he says... I see that you killed my sister, but uh, I don't know. We were just hired to do this too, so I, I don't know. I'm like, what are you talking about? I might want to live, depending on what your uh, bargain is. Want to know why you're here? Why you're trying to break into our bar? We were paid to. That's what we do. Uh, we just go around causing trouble when people ask us to. I mean, as you can tell, we're uh, kind of here shady folk anyway and we mostly live in the shadows and the underground so we have no problem with that we don't care if people don't like us but we are paid to do this by who somebody didn't like your bar did you did you I ask said by who yeah by who okay. paid by who um, if you want to you can go ahead and roll another intimidation flat again i actually have determination and i should have used it on that turn i forgot so i'm gonna go ahead and i'll, I'll intimidate this turn i'll you know kind of poke my spear into his neck a little bit not enough to cause it to bleed yet but okay. enough that you know he's sure that i'm gonna get answers out of him um right. so i'm using my determination to get advantage on this roll yeah so this one will actually have advantage yeah 19. yep he says uh the guy from frunes bruce emic he got pissed off when who what, what that guy that wrote that book about the monsters when he bought that big big place that you guys live in here uh emic wanted to buy this the other guy bought it and apparently sold it to you or whatever so uh he's pissed off he's trying to get your place shut down he's trying to run you out of town he, he doesn't want the rivalry i'm just gonna smirk it to scare you i'll smirk it at akasha and eldor uh eldor do you mind i mean he's at least given us some information what do you guys think should we spare the two that we can yeah it's not like they actually have a grudge against us I mean, they're just mercenaries. It's up to you guys. I'll leave it up to you. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, ig not ignore, but I'm gonna, you know, uh, turn back to, to Kelso and let uh, Eldor and Akasha decide because Eldor has spared the dying for the, for the others if, if he wants to. Um, where can we find 
the uh, the I guess he didn't specifically say that they are the the shunners, right? No, he didn't say that. But I okay, mean, then then I'll ask him. Yeah, do you, then you represent the shard shunners, I assume. He says, "I don't really think I'm in a position to to lie anymore." Yeah, we're the we're the shard shunners. We again just do the dirty work that people don't want to do. The underhanded, shady shit. Then if you want to leave this place alive with your friends here, at least those that are still mostly intact, uh, I want to know how we pull this contract off. How do we get these people, to, you know, the your people, to stop bothering our bar? Well, we are mercenaries, so if you... Uh, say uh, let's just friends, say that I'm not willing to pay. Well, I yes, I don't really have much of a choice, so uh, you save my friends, and I guess I default to, if you want to employ us then, you know, we're uh, working for you now. We sell to the highest bidder, even if that bid is not coin. I don't know if I like this transactional effort here. I think it would be in your best interests to go back to your boss. First, you're going to tell us where you work, and I think your better better uh, uh, bet would be to go back to your boss and tell him that you're no longer accepting this job, that this job is, is completed. Yeah, well, that's no problem. I'm not going to even if you guys don't employ us, I'm not going to mess with you guys again. So if Emic wants us to work for him, I ain't doing anything against you guys. He's going to have to figure out his own way to run you out of town. Yeah, I don't think you're I'm working for Emic anymore either. Okay, fine. Then I'm not working for him anymore either. All right. and, uh, He's going to have to figure out his own way then. And where is it that, uh, you know, if we see any of your folk around here again, where is it that we would come to find you? Uh, that is actually something that I will have to look into farther. No, no, no. I didn't so... even see... For you as the DM, G? This into it, so. okay. For you as the DM, don't worry about that. The answer is basically you would just answer other than that. He essentially, well, I might have to roll for it to see whether he's lying or not because he could try to lie about where the location is. But you would just tell us that he, you know, describes that we would go to, you know, go here to the sewers, you know, go turn left here, blah blah blah. It doesn't really okay. even matter. Like basically, it's it's whether we know or not that matters, not where it actually is that matters. Does that make sense? Yeah. So he says, um, if if you go down. And the sewers, you know, you follow the right ways, the, the patterns, you'll see where we're at. And he says, you know, go this way, go that way. He kind of tells you roughly where it's at. So he's like, basically, we're in we're in the sewers, like most rats are, if you need us. So, Are most of your people similar to yourself? Infected with some rat plague? Yeah, there's there's a few of us for sure. And so I don't know how, how it happened to us and when, I don't remember, but... Uh, I want to see if I believe him about the directions to where their where their hideout is. Okay, go ahead and roll an insight, right? Yep. Yeah. Insight. So it'll be insight on my side, and then your side, natural twenty. All right. Uh, on your side, you roll a deception or um, uh, deception or persuasion is what you would choose to roll in this. You don't tell me which one you're going to roll, but you decide whether he's lying or not, <clears throat> and then compare my natural twenty to what he rolls. Okay, and so where would I pull a de deception or persuasion? I, are those all so his basic stats on the combat? Well, tracker? oh I, no, I go to his character sheet, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can. Yeah, exactly. You can use his stats from from his sheet. Uh, it'll tell you if he's proficient in it or not. If he's not, then you just roll it with his modifier, which you can do from the combat tracker. You just bring up his stats, which I think is a sword icon, and you would double click charisma for a regular check, okay. not a uh, not a. Uh, and I mean, for for these guys, you you don't even need to really look if he's proficient or not. You would just you know decide in your head whether he's proficient or not. Uh, yeah, e in either deception, like it's likely that he'd be you know potentially anyways proficient in deception if he's lying, or persuasion if he's not. And then you would just add plus two because this level he would be plus two if he's proficient or not. Yeah, he he didn't. Well, don't you tell me whether he beat it or not. So. Yeah, you get the feeling that uh, that. What he's telling you is, you know, pretty much true because he doesn't really want to die, and he knows that you don't really like care about his life. He can tell that, and so he's kind of he's, he's being honest for sure. Okay, then still That's spear at his neck, tell, so. still spear, you know, kind okay. of ready to, to to you know enter it if I need to uh, turn over to Eldor and Akasha. What do you guys What do you guys think? I'll leave it up to you. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah. Should we? help his friends or leave it for the city watch to clean up i mean it is outside our bar so my real concern is the uh, effect on business i think we should uh, help the two and then mop up the third 
Yeah, the third is a bunch of rat parts anyways. The one that the Danica was in rat form, so her parts are not humanoid. They're, they're well, they're humanoid rat, but, you know, at least blend in a little bit. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of really you know, confusing bones to explain. Yeah. <laughs> So then, I mean, if, if that's, what you, you know, it's fine with me if that's how you guys want to handle it. So we can, uh, you know, Eldor, if you want to do the honors and, and help these two up, then uh, we can let uh, Kel so lick his wounds and get on out of here. There we go. Spare the Dying is a cantrip, right? Or is that first level? It's a cantrip. Okay, cool. Yep, so Bryn and Dasher are... Back they're, alive. Well, they're stabilized. They're not conscious yet, so he's going to have to figure out how he's going to okay. drag them out. Unless you guys want to, you know, heal them a little bit, like enough to actually get them, you know, on their feet, then he's going to have to figure out how to get them out of here. And of course, he does no, have no his problem. blown up sister, so. Yeah, that's kind of what I think, too, is it's kind of up to him, you know, how he wants to handle it. Yeah. We only promise to stabilize. We've held our end of the bargain. Yeah. All right, then I'll pull my spear up and let him stand up. I'm still kind of ready in case he decides to try to attack us or anything. And I guess okay. Ghost will step off of him. <laughs> Ghost will what? Get off of him. Get out of the way, Lila. Okay. I'll ask him, yes. uh, you know, do you want your sister's remains for... Oh, I don't. Actually, I don't know that it's a sister. Do you... If you want to, you can take her remains with you for whatever, you know, rituals your, your, your people may have. It's just assuming you're, she's your friend of some sort. He says, yeah, I'm going to take her with me. And uh, that was my sister, by the way. And uh, I'll carry her. So he grabs as much of her parts as possible and, and, you know, puts it in the bag and everything. And he's like, uh, I'll be back soon, definitely before morning, to come pick these two up. So he's just going to go get a friend, you know, to help him carry this, a friend or two to help, you know, sling him over the shoulder and carry the other two living ones out. So. All right, we'll prop him up he against says, the wall. He says, I'll be out of your hair by morning. You know. Maybe maybe pick a better line of business so you're not losing any more family members. He says, "Yeah, well, when you're a giant rat, there's not really a whole lot of business you can do, so because we're kind of odd, even when we're in our regular halfling forms, people are a little afraid of us anyway." I kind of want to do hire him. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know what? I'll tell him then. I tell you what, if you have trouble finding work, uh, come back and see us here in, in you know a week or two when you had time to clean yourself up a bit and we'll see what we can do he says okay just uh if you see us coming around don't uh don't shoot us this time and it'll make sure that the cat doesn't eat us because he's definitely been sniffing at me a lot so. well next time you you decide to, to try to come into our bar just come in through the front door another window yeah well that's the way it's going to be from now on because i ain't uh, i ain't messing with you guys i don't care how much they pay me fuck that well it's not at him so he carries us he grabs his sister's hearts and Puts her in the bag and goes. You see him heading towards the uh, the little alley where the the closest sewer tunnel is, which is the one that you guys came out of when you were down there looking for that hideout that one time. So you see him up down in the sewers. I'll pull the rag out of my bag and clean off the poison off of my spear. Okay. And just a, a big sigh. <laughs> that was a, that was a fun night. Oh, hopefully we won't have any more rat problems. Yeah, that's this problem seems to be solved. Good, uh, good. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Good uh, insight, I guess. Good uh, analysis that it was, you know, the uh, these guys that were well, Emic really that was the, the problem. Yeah, it just seemed a little odd that it started when he came around. Yeah, coincidences are, are usually, especially in a in a game, <laughs> in, in meta knowledge, of course, are usually not going to be actual coincidences. Yep. Alright, do you still got some time, Sako, or do you gotta go? I'm good till 3.30, man. Cool. Awesome, okay. then what can we... we... Do... Okay, ahead. no, you go ahead. I was I was hoping we could start Chapter 3. Like, was that the end of Chapter 2? Because that was a pretty big climactic yeah. boss fight. Awesome, cool. Just... Yeah, but really... <laughs> uh, the, the, only other, the only other thing was that uh, you pretty much all got it anyway. It's just, you know, um, there could have been more interactions with the, the rat people doing more stuff to fuck with you, but I just, you know, figured, get it out of the way. And then uh, I'm, I'm not saying Emmett won't fuck with you again, but there was that was pretty much the only other thing that we didn't do that we didn't explore more. Would have just been messing with you guys more, like you know, telling people that you have rats and then your business goes down and that kind of dumb shit. So, well, we so so one thing first of all, I'll, well, I'm putting this in the notes. To, um, it's called the fourth wall, and I'll explain how to uh, avoid breaking it a bit. Um, 
for for notes for afterwards just for dming notes because it's it's hard to do like you guys probably remember even early on in uh in balance like very often i would tell you guys uh you know here's the stuff you missed out on because you didn't go here and blah 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 um you as the dm can save those things for future use so if there is a some reason that we need to go back down there or even if you just don't have anything prepared for that week uh, or, or you know you're running out of time or whatever the stuff you've already prepared like going down into you know whatever they're like if we were supposed to go to their hideout to find these guys or something like maybe they ran in the fight and we have to go after him or whatever uh, or didn't you know convince him to not come after us anymore and cancel this contract on us then whatever that stuff you had prepared for you could use later by just putting it back in front of us at some point which kind yeah. of you know that way you can kind of re not reuse but basically still use the, the content you had prepared and not essentially waste it um so you so those things you don't necessarily want to say out loud even though i did it so many times because that, like for me the natural urge was you know you guys cleverly got around this so here's what you could have had to deal with and blah 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 <clears throat> and, and as a dm you kind of don't really want to do that as much as it is your natural reaction to want to do it uh, but anyways uh, so don't worry about that but just you know keep that in mind that you know if we needed to later on you can always give us some other excuse that we need to go down there maybe maybe we're going down there because we need to hire them for something else or whatever you know you can always find some means to to, to make us have to deal with that other content that you would already kind of worked on and preparing so anyway um, yeah I remember to do that and then some other stuff though too like uh, uh, on this one the way that it's set up is that uh, I, I'm not sure if it comes back later in the story but there was you know not really much else to do with these guys but i wanted to leave it open in the same thing with like maxine so like maybe you could meet up with them later because you know it didn't say anything else about the talking horse later either but i just thought well you know kind of fun to have more npcs come into the bar and stuff like that because they could i might write them in for more fun shit later on you know yeah. so i'm kind of trying to do some open-ended stuff but i do need to be careful about giving my saying too much about the stuff like you just said you know don't even worry about it, I mean, it is, makes it not is... as fun though too because then it's like the, the story seems more real if you guys don't get told the little meta stuff yeah obviously. and that's that's so. that's the thing is like just to make it more immersive you want to try to avoid breaking the fourth wall where where you can um it's just it's it's apparently it's a common newbie mistake and i didn't even know about it that i you know had done it lots of times early on uh, i had just you know tried not to as, as time went on um so it's, it's pretty normal um it was one of those things that i noticed in uh you know, like a DMing video that that's a really common one that uh, new, new DMs always make. So anyway, on with uh, wherever we're doing. So, uh, you know, if he's taken off, you know, if we don't have anything else to do, I'll go sit at the bar for a bit with uh, with Woody and then, you know, probably go up and, and rest. How about you guys? Uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, it's a rest. It's spells back too. Okay, guys. That could have gone really so, bad. We got We got lucky with that explosion roll. That fi that so that bomb is a fireball, which is a level. Th it's basically at level three is when you when when mages get that, um, when they get access to fireball. Uh, so it just we just got really lucky with that explosion because that could have been a really tough fight, especially if they were supposed to be immune and we didn't have magic weapons. Like we would have been screwed. Yeah, yeah, the, the four of them, and then when they in their uh, wear out forms, they would have had slightly different attacks and stuff too. So there could have been a, an interesting fight from four little. Midgets, but they yeah, definitely kick their asses, though. And I was going to ask a question, a DMing question, but uh, better not to know in case we run into them later on. Um, yeah, so I mean, just hanging out at the bar, unless there's anything else to do, and then you know, long rest or whatever. Okay. Uh, G, if you have yeah. a sirenscape sound you want to click over to, go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll give it a happier sound. Um, when you guys go back in, uh, obviously Sancho left for the night, and when you guys go back in, Woody's like, I heard some commotion out there. What the hell was going on? Some rat folk uh, were hired by the competitor down the street to uh, infest our place and cause some, some havoc. So we, we dealt with the problem. Was that that Emmett guy that I know I, you were asking Tancho and I about, that new yeah. business owner that came yeah. in yesterday? Yeah. yeah, he contracted a group. In fact, the ones that I'd asked you about earlier, the shard shunners, uh, he'd contracted them to uh, harass us, essentially. And that's where the rats were coming from. And Woody says, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Rats, charge runners, rat symbol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah, well, hopefully that's taken care of. I'm sure whoever those people are, if you even if you left any of them alive, uh, I'm sure they won't mess with you. Well, one of them is in so, pieces, so she won't be coming back. Uh, two others were pretty badly <laughs> wounded, and we let the last one uh, kind of deal with them. You know, they'll, it's probably if you hear some noise outside tonight, it's him picking them back up. Um, speaking of, actually, in the morning, if you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, any of the patrons that are in, maybe Jerry or somebody, get them to go down to the Bent Nail and uh, bring some contractors up, get that window fixed. Just take it out of petty cash. Yeah, I'll uh, 
I'll, I'll definitely have the, the guys take care of it. There, there's always guys from the Carpenters Guild hanging around. So, and then maybe, like you said, I'll put Jerry and Little Jerry to work. Maybe they can earn a few drinks or something. So, we can take care of that. It's like, and I heard an explosion too. What the hell was that? Is everything okay out there? Uh, kind that was the broad. quickest. Yeah, that was the, the quickest means of dealing with the problem. Hence the little bits says, of the one that died. Says, all right, okay. So, oh yeah, that was why that one was be. So I just figured you hacked him up or something like that. Not liking rats. So. Speaking, says, all right. Well. Speaking of two things, uh, DMing thing or uh, for for the DM not well in narrative a little bit in that. I'll need at some point a me like a room or something to be able to to make some things some some things that are a little more complicated to build. That one's really quiet. G, if you want to bump that up a little bit, now that we don't have auto sounds playing, um, <clears throat> but for brewing some things that kind of stuff, uh, you know, I'll need a relatively safe room to do that. Maybe the cellar would work actually for that. If we're not there was a cellar or basement. Yeah, there is. Yeah. A, I gave you the maps for all of it too, so there is a cellar room. Um, if that's not yeah. otherwise being used, uh, Akasha Eldor, you guys have any any use for the cellar? Beyond storage? No, no, that's it. You guys mind if I use it for, you know, a, a, an alchemical room? Actually, there's Go two point. rooms down there. Perfect. So I'll use the further one, so that way it's in the basement. If, if I accidentally blow something up, it's not going to, you know, break windows and stuff. It'll just cause some structural damage, that's all. <laughs> yeah. So I'll use... If you look at the map, G, the basement map, um, I'll use the... You guys can see it as well if you scroll up to it, but uh, in Discord. I'll use the far room from the trap door, so out through the cellar door and then through two doors to get to that back room. Um, let's hire some contractors, I'll pay for it, to, to uh, fortify that second door in case I do blow something up, if I make a uh, critical failure of some kind and you know make an explosion in there that it doesn't rattle the whole building down. I'll look for Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't I don't necessarily need to you know make anything right now I just want to have a safe place to do that in case you know in the future when I need some so <clears throat> that and then also I have a I need to special order uh, something if there's like a, a weapon smith around I know where was the place elder that you got your staff made that master Ooh, staff don't remember the name that was the bent nail wasn't it was that the bent nail Tally? yeah I think Tally yeah. was taken care of you guys woodworking just because it was stuff. a woodworking thing okay uh this yeah, is a little bit stuff. of this is a little bit of woodworking anyway i think i'd probably like to actually get a, a spear made similarly uh you know a similar expensive spear made but i want a special uh screw on ending basically i want i want the middle of the i want the staff to be or the spear to be able to break down into two pieces basically so i could have just the head of the spear if i needed to be able to keep it in a backpack so i'm not carrying a spear around if i needed to be uh you know not obvious that i'm carrying a weapon so um, thread it in the middle so you could unscrew it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So a, a spear that wouldn't ruin the structural integrity of it, but have a, a screw on middle of it like a, like a painter's pole has. You understand what I'm saying, G? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. I understand what you're saying. Okay. I'm just uh, thinking in-game, yeah. So, so Mastercraft... So, so essentially similar... trade out the tips, right? Yeah. Well, basically. about halfway down, but you can still trade out the top part. Yeah, halfway through the shaft of it so that I can uh, break it in two equal length halves of, you know, a... a Basically, like one would just be a stick, and then one would be the spearhead with some stick, um, and that way I can break it down and put it in my backpack. So it's not obvious that I'm carrying a weapon on me if I need to. But also mastercrafted okay. for a plus one, so not magic, but uh, extra, extra damage and attack roll. Okay. So I'll put a special order in for that, you know, the following day or whatever. So ignore that for now. I meant to do that, you know, next time we're we're out and shopping type of thing. So ignore that for now. Let me write that down. I just wanted to, rem to put it on my notes to remind myself. Eldor Akasha, anything else you guys you know want to get done tonight, or should we just get some rest and uh, you know get back to business in the morning? I'm just gonna rest up, get my spells back. Yeah, I'm good. All right, I'll tap a coin on the uh, on the bar for uh, Woody and head on upstairs. Okay, and then. Uh... Woody also tells you, he's like, oh yeah, I meant to tell you too, uh, one of the bosses from the Carpenter's Guild came in, and he was actually bitching at us because we, you know, did the repairs to the bar without them, and, uh, you know, how much they hate that kind of shit, so just, Are they I'm not saying that they're gonna, he's, uh, he, he says, you know, I'm not sure they're gonna do anything, but I've, I've just, I've heard of, and even seen it a little bit before, guilds, you know, kind of bullying, bullying people into forcing them to do work with them, so I mean, don't be surprised if the uh, carpenter's guild is a little angry at us. So. This I thought we heard. 
people were they not from the guild <laughs> well we hired a foreman so i mean was that foreman from the bent nail not union or from the oh no no you guys did no you guys did hire a foreman didn't you i'm sorry yeah never mind so uh then then what he says i'll change that what he says that uh one of the guys from the carpenter's guild came in and just to check on things and and to see how everything was going on last lab that was a little bit yeah he came in to check on things and see how everything was going to make sure that the uh, foreman did his job so and then uh also saying don't be like that uh the guy from your local tavern because he you know he didn't pay us and or he didn't work with us and we don't like him when people don't work with us and so but otherwise oh, he was friendly emic didn't hire union guys then uh-huh because that that's what he said he said well that's what what he said he didn't say emic by name but he said the owner of the tavern just up the road so obviously emic so okay. and the guild was saying that uh they're not real fond of emic and if he needs any repairs done in the future it's going to cost more they're just not going to work with him and they said uh if you want to keep your place in tip-top shape to stay happy with the and friendly with the carpenter's guild so. well i mean while he's there then i would have taken him down to the cellar to show him the door that i need reinforced and uh you know maybe some proper cabinetry and things like that the, the kind of stuff i'm going to need in there for storage and, and the ability to to craft as needed without risking blowing up the whole bar okay then we'll say he uh was asking you to like retroly um so he said okay so uh metal around it or what do you think is obviously if you're gonna stuff blow yeah up, i'm guessing you're gonna want wood ain't gonna cut it so steel, steel plated door. or what do you think yeah steel reinforced door okay. uh, steel plating along the eastern wall uh the other wall will be fine if that, if that rattles it's gonna rattle there's no the steel wouldn't help there uh, but i don't want to catch you know we have hard liquor in the basement if there's a fire it's gonna be real hard for me to get out of here alive so uh steel reinforced uh, along the eastern wall and that door and then cabinetry to, to fill the place so I have enough storage for uh, ingredients, things like that. He says, okie dokie, okie dokie. Uh, one uh, and secure thing. lock. I need a secure lock on the door as well. Oh, locks. Yeah, duh. I guess I should have thought of locks too. Okay, so you want uh, uh, a deadbolt? You want a, you know, a, a padlock with a chain? You know, with an arm, you know, metal arm for that? Or what, what kind of lock? Two sliding bolts. Uh, one maybe at five right. foot high and one at about three, three and a half foot high. Uh, you know, center of the door basically so a kick isn't going to open it. Okay, sliding bolts to got that. Uh, also, another thing too, I'm assuming if you're working with chemicals and stuff, you're gonna want proper ventilation. So uh, I'm going to need to make a little, you know, tube to go through the through the floor, you know, up to the ceiling through the, you know, the, the floor above you uh, in, in between the planks there and go out to ventilate outside. Does that work for you? Yeah. I just wanted to check before I go yeah, cutting into your, into your building. Yeah, so. that'll, that'll be fine. And then, but along that ventilation shaft, I want at least say three uh, mesh grates in there so that uh, say we were to have a rat problem in the future uh, that they're not able to just crawl through the grate St and I want them metal obviously not wood or, or you know twine or anything where the rats can just chew straight through okay so I'll put three uh, grates that are ventilable uh, made out of metal of course so all right grates door steel all right I got it uh, I will let the guys know uh, we'll probably come by tomorrow and um, double check with you and see if you're ready to get started and I'll have my guys and we'll make an estimate for you then too if that works for you sure uh and i'll have uh you know our, our help here you know show you down to the to the basement so you guys can get to work when you're ready that's cool all right see you guys tomorrow so that was earlier in the day and then anything else before you guys go to bed after you finished off the rats and talk to woody not for me oh and you yep. you do notice that a uh, well i'm assuming ghost went around and caught all the rats that were on the inside because there was still a few that were in there after you guys patched the holes the ones that got through so i'm assuming ghost went around and rounded them up right well, yeah, go around and have a couple snacks. Okay. So you guys do look around and don't see any more signs of rats. So no rats, no more crap and stuff like that. But you guys also did notice, too, when you were looking around before, uh, you cleaned everything up, that there was a couple of spots where somebody had taken little pieces of, like, lettuce or, you know, meat and stuff like that and threw it in the little corners where people wouldn't really see. But you're assuming that that was, you know, what attracted the rats and then they bore the holes on the outside and let them in so but all that is cleaned up you don't see any more rats so sounds good let me apply a long last all right pull up the thing here so that was the end of chapter two uh, again you guys since we go ahead no i just said yay um, and so, like we were talking about, since you guys already started at level two, you're not going to level up after the chapter you just did, because otherwise you would have been doing that and leveling up to three. But you guys started did that since we started you guys at level two. Yeah. So now we're about one, to start. one level ahead if we were doing it that way. Yep. Now we're about 
about to start chapter three. Okay, so you guys go to bed and, uh, excuse me, in the morning you guys are awoken, it's pretty early, it's probably, you know, seven or eight, well not too early, you know, six or seven or so, and uh, you guys got a decent night's sleep from wearing yourselves out from fighting all those rats and everything, and you guys are woken up by the sound of a very, very big explosion just outside of your guys' place, so... Is there, so, um, do you have a sirenscape sound for that? Oh, yes. You could, like, you don't have to, just to try to remember. Like, I, I put notes in there to try to remind myself for, for special booms and things like that, let's say. But also if there's, like, a setting for the early morning, you know, outside of Troll Skull or whatever. Yep, this is actually, <coughs> you know, a thing for the uh, uh, new chapter that we're at here, downloading okay. right now. All right, then, I mean, a, a loud explosion from outside... Yep, like you hear nearby or far in the city about. somewhere? It no, not very far at all. I mean, it, it definitely sounds like it's very close to your guys's place. Um, and then you heard like windows breaking. You hear people screaming. You know, shards of stuff flying through the air, and the sound of fire burning after a very loud explosion. I immediately hop out of bed and the front door. I immediately hop out of bed and run over to my balcony to head out there. Look for Elder because going. You can see it on the map, but basically out the door. Uh, then I look over at Eldor's door to see if it's open, like he heard it as well. Yeah, I'm heading downstairs. All right, you guys, you guys both go out, and when you look out, you can see, especially from above, you can see it even better that there's a big cloud of, uh, you know, grayish black smoke coming up from where the uh, explosion happened, and it was actually just right outside the door. Basically, um, it didn't like blow the door off or anything. Right outside, but it was our definitely door? like outside, yeah, in front of our bar in the street. <laughs> Uh, just not too far from your door. Again, it, it didn't do any real damage. I mean, you know, shrapnel and stuff flying and hitting the wall and everything, but no structural damage to the place, luckily, but right outside your door, though, the front door of the tavern. Did it break our windows? No, actually, it did not. Uh, it, it did other windows, though. So... Okay. Actually, no, no, I'm sorry, it, it would have, because it did broke win break windows, and where it's at, it would have been closest to your guys' place. So a couple of the windows in the front were broken, but, I mean, the, the front front wall wasn't blown in or anything, so... Well, that glass maker's really going to love us from all this all the yeah, extra work he's getting. Uh, in looking at the remains of, of the explosion and, and the fire, uh, can I tell whether it was a bomb that blew it up? Having familiarity with bombs, of course. Uh, yes, actually, you do. So can you please give me a... Arcana check, and I will be right back. Hey, okay, second. All right. I got about five minutes left too. Okay, Sarko. Looks like we're gonna have to really fortify this building because this <laughs> building seems to be just the center of attention right now. Uh, maybe your maybe your your uh you know steel or copper plating wasn't a bad idea. We should just do the whole building in it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We're gonna eventually have to build this thing into a into a safe room, just a huge safe room. Mm -hmm. Get ready for the purge. <laughs> Just build a moat around it. We'll be fine. There you go. A whole bunch of drunkards falling into the moat. That'd be great to fish <laughs> out in the morning. Well, that's that's how you putrefy the moat so that nobody wants to cross it. <clears throat> with all the dead drunkards in it. I think I was looking at the third level. I was mixing up the third level on the second, the third floor and the second floor, because the balcony is on the second floor. And the third floor, you have to use the stairs inside and then go over. Um, we should probably look at those at some point, especially since it seems like we're getting it, you know, kind of attacked here in our own bar a lot. So, mine, is, my bedroom that I picked was the bottom left on the, but I was mixing the second and third floor, I think. So it's the bottom left on the second floor where the balcony is just outside. Um, Sako, did you did you pick? I thought you said the one right by mine, didn't you? Uh, yeah, where do I get that? Uh, uh, so go to Discord. Uh, actually, okay. Uh, ben, are you back? Yep. All right, turn the music down just slightly, if you would. So it's a little loud for Sako. Let's go ahead and finish uh, the the rest of this, and then we'll we'll uh, confirm which rooms are or which rooms are ours, if that works for you guys. Because yeah. Sako's got to go in a few minutes. So okay. go ahead, Sako. Uh, or Gene, there's my Arcana check. Yeah, with that Arcana check, you <clears throat> did notice that it looked like it was caused by a fireball spell. Okay, so... The, you know, the burn marks and all that stuff, because you've, you've seen them before working, you know, with mages and everything in your old 
uh, army. You've seen lots of explosions, but you've also seen lots of fireball well, magic explosions cover. too. Yeah. There's a little bit of a difference, you know. Okay. And this one was definitely a magical. This wasn't like a, a your type of bomb. It, it was a magical fireball. Okay. Uh, looking around, do I see you know any arcane practitioners running? Any mages? Uh, no. When you guys look around, um, you see there's some people. Obviously, other people, the locals, starting to step out into the street, and then you see that there is uh, eleven bodies that have flown a little bit. Actually, give me one second. Share a little map to you guys. There is eleven bodies that were hard that that were you know moved by the explosion. So, so they were killed, presumably. So they they weren't already dead. By it. Not that you can necessarily tell that, okay. Uh, yeah, they... Now, uh, sorry for the, the crappy stuff there, but the big circle with the X is where the fireball went off, and the little circles is the areas where the bodies went flying. So there's 11, 10 or 11 bodies in, the, in that area up over there. So that you would assume were blown up because they're burned and singed and stuff from the fireball. Okay. The image won't load for me. I'm getting an error again. So uh, if, if, if afterwards... You can just drop it in uh, in Discord afterwards, so I know what you're what you're showing. Does it look it's like her bar was the target? <clears throat> uh, it, it well, it looks like it was thrown towards the bar. But if they were trying to hit you, obviously, you know, the bar itself, then they missed or something got in the way or something like that because that was you know a good what's that five ten fifteen you know thirty forty feet from the door. So, because we'll just say that building to the left with the lights hanging on it is the front door of the bar, if you understand what I'm talking about with, with the stairs. We'll just okay. say that that's the bar. So you were at, so it was outside the bar, you know, twenty, you know, thirty feet roughly outside the front door of the bar. So, all right. Now you guys know the city watch is probably going to be here very soon because of that big loud explosion. So, uh, did you guys want to check anything out before they get here? Because you know, as soon as they get here, they're going to quarantine this area off, and nobody's going to be able to fucking check anything out. Yeah, I want to. I want to run down with a caution. You know, is Eldor out of like coming back inside again? Is Eldor? Is his door open? Eldor, did you get up? Did you come out? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's go down. Okay, maybe so you know, if there's anybody that's potentially alive enough that we could pick them up, we can maybe we can get some answers. Yeah, I'm gonna go check out the bodies. All right, I'm gonna probably have to take off in a sec here, but uh, I'm pre pretty much that explosion woke me up, and I just kind of jumped out of bed, just like the rest of you guys. All right, when you guys look around, you see uh, bodies. There's an old an old uh, female human woman uh, who you don't really recognize. You're assuming she might have just been walking by. Uh, there is... Uh, actually, go ahead and give me perception checks, everyone, please. Well, if sarko has got to go in a sec, Jay, we might... Say, I mean, we can roll them anyways, but... <clears throat> uh, you know, because it, it's 3.30 anyway, so you know if we've got to go, then we get to save this for yeah. next time. Yeah. If that works. We can... Uh, so what we'll do is... So you guys are checking through. Again, you saw there was like 10 or 11 bodies sitting over there. Uh, and you guys are checking through the bodies and everything before the city watch gets here and then you actually hear the sound of air moving like you know kind of louder than you would expect it to up above you uh almost like and then it, you know like a fluttering flapping sound and then you you hear the sound of air moving and you look and in one of the uh, buildings across from you guys a griffin with somebody riding it lands on top of the building and sits there and looks at you guys and that's the end of the day does he look like a green goblin? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there's a, a, a big griffin lands on the roof next to, not far from you guys, and, it, and it, you can see that there is somebody riding it, and they both perch there. And check you guys out for a second. 